the year is 2020. We're going to go ahead and just roll into this thing here. And I want to start out by congratulating everyone. And I, I, I mean that in a very, very sincere way. I mean that truly, truly sincerely, because the reality is at this stage of the game in 2020, each of us has been through a tremendous amount of trauma in our own way, in our own lives. We've gone through a number of key trials, tribulations, experiences, understandings, lessons, all sorts of things, activations, initiations. We're coming to the stage of collective consciousness in 2020 in which those choices, those alignments, those contracts, those decisions, certain things that you chose to have happen over the course of this physical lifetime are now beginning. And so I want to thank you guys for joining us. Congratulations. You have made it to one of the most important and incredible transitional areas, eras, I guess we could say, maybe that's the right word, in this entire physical lifetime. And so right now, all over the earth plane, myself and many others have been called together to begin to dispense, to begin to mobilize, to begin to train, to begin to disseminate, and to begin to pass on multidimensional teachings, activations, pieces of information that us as a soul group, us as this monad, as this group of beings who choose to incarnate on the human plane over and over and over again, we will choose to begin to remember. And so one of our tasks here, one of the purposes of the group and this gathering and what is essentially a meeting of tribes from all over the galaxy here today, uh, one of our tasks here is to begin that process of accelerated remembering. And so here we are, guys. Thank you for joining us here today and once again for hearing that call to service. Like I just said, we are now entering a phase of our time here on Earth in which each of you is being called to remember, to reactivate elements of ourselves from past lives, ancient knowledge, sacred multidimensional abilities that have been downloaded into us, things that we came in to this body with. Many of those things have been eclipsed from us, and we're going to be talking about how to activate those elements of ourselves over the coming months. But today, this group, this gathering, this moment that you are in right now, this is part of the unfoldment of your plan, of our purpose, of our group, of what we came here to this earth realm for. It's the activation of what we chose to become in this, this strange body. And once again, while I'm talking, if you guys can flip through the photos, look who is here. See who is amongst us today. Over the next year, many of you are going to be joining us and many, many more along the way uh, through a journey of activating, creating, developing, and putting to use a whole new set of skills that are present within you within your body, things that you were taught in the past, things that are magic, that's impossible, science fiction things, fourth density energetic abilities that are standard to the human body, to the human consciousness are becoming available, available to us on dramatically accelerated levels. And so I'm just gonna say, you guys can see it here on the screen. Sometimes we need to hear these phrases within each of you that is gathered here today, no matter where you are, no matter what you've been through, no matter your trauma, no matter the suppression, the oppression, the victimization, even if you were the victimizer, because that's one of our roles here on the earth plane. Some of us will play that role at times. It doesn't matter. It's part of our journey. We're beginning a new phase and within each of you lies true magic, true multi-dimensional intuition and the ability to truly shape our reality. These are choices and abilities that we came in with. And I'm just gonna say it because a lot of us, a lot of us here, we've, we've already experienced this in the body. In ages past, these abilities, these pieces of ourself, some of the things that sometimes make us too much or, or too intense or too weird or too crazy. In ages past, these abilities, they were thought of as magic, fantasy. Maybe they were forbidden. Maybe, you know, for a lot of us that have lived lives within the church or organized religion, we've had those elements of ourselves deeply, deeply suppressed, deeply shamed, deeply pushed down within us. And we are now discovering that these hidden and dormant elements of ourselves were actually gifts chosen by each of us to assist in the liberation of our planet and this entire earthly realm. And if you guys haven't figured it out yet, if you found my work, if you stumbled upon this strange man, however you did, there's going to be a piece of you that knows 
whether it's big or small or it's just awakening, if you're just starting to figure it out, you have an assignment. You have a mission. There's a reason why you are here today. And one of the things we're doing with this group is we're helping those individuals unpack and understand what that is, what it was that we chose to do. In my opinion and experience, I can tell you what Matthew came here to do, and that's the liberation of our planet from the parasitic construct in this entire earthly realm, the expansion of human consciousness. That is why we are here. And this is very much, I'm going to say it, it's kind of a cheesy thing, you guys. Some of you guys have heard me say this here before, but look around once again. This is that stage in the movie when someone comes and knocks on your door. We don't know who it is. It's some person. They knock on the door and they're like, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, we need you. Your world needs you. Your country needs you. This race needs you. You're being reactivated and it's time to come back because we chose to come into this life for this very stage. And who are we though? Some of us are the ancient mystics. Some of us are spiritual warriors. Some of us are great healers. There are many assignments. There are many versions of us. Some of them are oracles. Some of us are parents. Some of us are accountants. Some of us work in the office or the coffee shop by day, but by night, what are we? We are operatives working on behalf of truth and liberation on this planet. And so once again, I've said it multiple times. Look who's here. Look who heard the call. It's not just you. It's people from all over this planet. We know we were meant for something more. We've watched the changes. We've watched the changes in others. We've watched others step into their missions and activate and begin to take this active role in this ascension process. We've watched their bodies change, their faces change, their lives change. And we are at the stage in this journey in which each of us here today is picking up that next phase. And so look around, you guys. We're a tribe. We're a family. And what are we really? I'm just going to say it. Sometimes people get weird when I say this, so it's okay. Some people here are going to be like, I don't know, Matthew, what are we? We are an army that chose to activate at this stage of the journey. And so we're going to be talking about that here today. We're going to be doing some work. We're going to be doing some activation. Um, and we're going to be especially opening up some elements of the emotional body because for those of you guys that are trying to figure out how do I become more psychic? How do I become more intuitive? How do I activate all these gifts or this energy or these abilities? This guy Matthew saying, I don't know. I think I have an ability. I felt some things in my life, right? Each of us has. I get some ideas. How do we activate that? How do we actually turn it on in the body? Um, I can tell you with great assurance that I'm one of the people on this earth plane, and there are many others in this group here today that hold the keys toward activating that. But it's a little bit different for each of us. And so one of the things we're going to be doing within this strange blue flame collective is we're helping individuals come to their own understanding of how those elements work. Some of you guys have been with me in other classes and other workshops. Those are continuing. What we're doing with this group is we're giving people a chance to come together on a greater level for an actual gathering of activation and demonstration of the work that we're going to be doing in much, much greater detail as the months go on. And so I want to start out by saying as we go into this next slide, feel free to place your comments in the chat as I talk. Um, for those of you guys that have done this stuff with me before, you know I'm going to go on a lot of ranting and we're going to go on a lot of uh, rambling here. Um, and please feel free to ask questions. One of the things I want to pass on to you guys about the School of Multidimensional Intuition is that there are no dumb questions. Um, one of the things that I like to stress and really hammer home to people here is that we need to be able to create an environment of shameless learning in which people feel free to go like, oh, hey, uh, uh, you know, everyone's talking about this one thing and I, can we just define it? Do we know what it is? You know, there's, there's, there are going to be many terms and structures and elements and ideas and concepts that get thrown around in this ascension group or like community. And one of the things that I strive to do to create in the educational work that I do is create an open forum or a shameless environment where people can say, you know, how do we really understand this? And what does it really mean? And we're free to question and ask. And here's the thing. I'm not saying that I have all the answers. If you guys have been in my classes, you'll know I definitely do not. But what we're creating is an open forum, an organization, a brotherhood, and a spiritual order of beings with one specific purpose. 
liberation of this planet, remembering who we are, why we came here. Maybe that's three purposes. But anyway, here we go. So put your questions in the chat. Feel free to ask questions. But who and what is the Blue Flame Collective? You guys have probably seen, you guys have probably seen this description already. But the Blue Flame Collective is a group of multidimensional beings, spiritual warriors, mystics, psychics, healers, travelers, starseeds, hybrid humans, wanderers, whatever you want to call it, insert ascension, you know, terminology here, insert ascension label here. That's all of us. It is everyone on the earth plane, at least in my opinion, most of the insouled individuals, and by that I mean beings with actual souls. Believe it or not, it's not everyone. But that said, for those of us that are gathered here today, we have returned to earth deliberately during this amazing period. We're an actual team. And so each month, what are we doing? We're going to be gathering together online over Zoom. My prayer is, is that in the coming years or months, we're going to be able to do this physically as well. But each month we will gather together online over Zoom for a unique meditation and a multidimensional healing process. We'll be working with specific chakras, specific meridians, specific organs, specific elements of the human energy complex. These are things that we are, we are working with and developing in the individual work that I do and the group classes that I do. And I'm excited uh, that some of you guys are going to be joining us with those as well. But our mission, once again, to truly heal, unify, and advance our consciousness, once again, the purpose of liberation of this planet from the parasitic construct. And so we're going to be healing. We're going to be activating. And it's going to be a very, very individual process for each person here. Because if there's one thing that we already know, it's that each of us came here with a very different set of skills. It's not the same for each of us. But in order to make full use of what it is that we chose to activate, we will be doing this by healing the human body developing our intuitive abilities and strengthening the mind body spirit complex through education and awareness of the changes occurring in our bodies during this great awakening and the reason why i say that you guys is for those of you guys who aren't aware and we have many healers we have many great guides and mystics already gathered here with us today so a lot of you guys are going to be aware of this but if you're not one of the things that we aim to make clear to the greater community over the coming months is that our systems are changing our chakras are changing our meridians, our nadis, our organs are also ascending. Every aspect of conscious life on this earth plane is beginning to experience an additional level, an additional wavelength, an additional layer, an additional frequency of conscious energy. And so one of the things we'll be doing, one of the ways in which we are unlocking, developing, activating, and healing human consciousness is by gaining awareness of these systems. In my work, individually, it has been the single most useful, important, and powerful piece of knowledge that I have picked up upon this strange journey. That's the knowledge of the meridians, of the chakras, of the organs, of the emotional frequencies and the energetic wavelengths contained therein. When I began to start working with those pathways in the body, I believe, and, and I also watched it with my clients, people's lives change. Elements of ourselves that we didn't even know were there begin to suddenly turn on. Long running maladies, long running issues, emotional, mental, physical, Certain things in the body just begin to fade away in very strange and interesting ways once we begin taking agency, direct control, and deliberate use of our multidimensional abilities. And so today, we're going to be discussing just a little bit more about what this weird group is, what we're being called to do. And then we're going to go through a very unique process of identifying and activating your next available multidimensional intuitive skill. The reality is, like I just said, and I'm going to say it a lot more, you guys are going to find out, I'm very redundant. I'll say the same things to you over and over again. Um, for each of us, it's different. Everybody here, if you are gathered here in this group, if you think, yeah, I don't know, I thought I'd just do this Patreon group, this guy, saw him on Facebook, I don't know, saw him on this other video, maybe we're going to do this, you know, you'll feel like you just randomly walked in the door. Some of us know we didn't, but the reality is you have an ability you have a skill and you are here today to learn how to use that, to develop it and activate it. All of them, as many as we can activate. And, and there are many for each of us. The level to which we are able to make use of this energy is entirely different for each of us. But what we find is that with thoughtful study, consistent clearing 
healing of the physical body and expansion, especially healing of the inner child, we are able to make use of an entirely different version of ourselves. And so we're going to be showing you how to do that. We're going to be starting the process. We are going to be essentially, and you can see it right down there, we're going to be in participating in a powerful activation process known as linking the flame. Igniting a new frequency of multidimensional conscious energy throughout the entire human energy system. And I'm, I'm just going to start. I'm going to seed your consciousness and let you know where we're placing that flame. Some of you guys have done this with me before. If you haven't, you'll probably feel a little bit of a sensation down there as soon as I say this. But where are we beginning that flame in the body today? It's in the sacral chakra. Right down there, kind of near that reproductive region oftentimes in between your belly button and the genital region in the body, we have one of the most powerful, creative, and also useful energetic sources in the body. And one of the reasons why we will be starting out with activating the blue flame within the sacral chakra, and yes, we'll be talking about it more, is because that energy source within human consciousness of the earth plane right now is one of the most hijacked. It is one of the most stolen. It is one of the most attached. And it is our journey. It is our right. And it is our mission here today to begin reclaiming those energies within ourselves. And so we're going to be balancing and igniting a new fire in that sacral chakra. But first, what are we going to do? Some of you guys have been in my classes before. So you know how to press the record button on the human body. You can see it right there on the bottom of the screen. What's this, what's this guy talking about? The record button? What do you mean? We're already recording this, luckily. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be enhancing and activating and opening up a very powerful pathway in the body. We're not going to focus on the specificity of it too much. What we're going to be doing is allowing the human energy body to begin to settle in, to begin to center. And what happens is for nearly every one of us upon activating and opening up this one pathway in the body, we tend to have this reaction where we kind of center. We breathe, we come back inward, and we start to focus. And so what is that pathway in the body? Some of you guys already know it's the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S, one of the most powerful and incredible pathways for just balancing, enhancing, and understanding human consciousness. And so what we're going to do here today, you guys, is we're going to demonstrate true multidimensional energetic transmission by opening and centering the human body. Some of you guys are going to get a little sleepy. You might feel a little tired. Some of you will feel even more alert and focused. We allow the body to go into whatever state it needs. But let's begin here today just as a group with some deep, slow breaths. I'd like you guys to just kind of tune in to the energy of your lower belly. Tune into the energy of the moment. Tune into the energy of your expectations of what you desire, of those elements of yourself, even if you don't know what they are. Tune into that desire and your intention. Take some very gentle, deliberate breaths all the way down in your belly like there's a balloon. And if you feel comfortable, close those eyes as you exhale. Go real slow, really press that breath out like there's a little pump down in your belly. You're beginning to activate. You're feeling the energy of those beings in their own little corners, in their own little realms all over the planet. As you breathe deeply, you're acknowledging that you are synchronizing your energy amongst a group of multidimensional travelers who have chosen to come together in this moment on the earth plane to truly empower the human spirit. And so what we'll be doing here today is we'll take three deep breaths together as a group. I'll count from three to one. We'll do it together like a group, like a family, like a unit. And on that third breath as we exhale, and some of you have done this with me before, you'll be aware of the power and the centering and the frequency of this ability. On that third breath, we'll take a deep breath in and we'll We simply create a tone, a vibration, a note. It may be high, it may be low, it may be wavy. Your voice might falter or choke, 
Some of you might cough or feel embarrassed. Some of you might hear your own voice and feel shame or triggered or incapable. This is your introduction and this is your activation. You'll be opening your vagus nerve and preparing to receive new energy, focusing the human body. Please join me. And so I'll count from three to one and we'll take a very deep breath in as a group. We'll just hold it for a quick moment and then all together we'll let it out. And so let's press that record button, everybody. Close your eyes. Let your body settle. Let go of those hips. Let go of those thighs. Let go of your chin. Let go of your shoulders. Let go of your face. Good, there you go. Take a deep breath in with me, guys. Three, two, one. Hold that breath, fill yourself up. And release. Let your breath out, make that sound. It's like a snake or a steam valve. You're just letting that breath out. Let's do number two. It's a big, deep, full breath. Expand your belly. Do it with the group. Synchronize your energy. Here we go. Three, two, one. Deep breath in. Hold it. And release. Make that sound. Blow that breath out. Good job. You are synchronizing your energy with a group of multidimensional travelers entering a fourth density sphere, an impenetrable bubble of light, of healing, of transmission, of true grace and divine truth. Let's take a deep breath in as I count to three to one and allow your body to vibrate. Follow me in creating whatever tone that you are able to muster. This is your soul's notes your true abilities returning. Let all your breath out, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in, in three, two, one. everybody for some of you guys that's very new for some of you guys that'll feel very familiar very natural every now and then for some of us we'll begin that process and we get some strange feelings some strange emotions in the body wherever you are at this stage of the journey good job thank you for opening your energy notice how your body kind of sits more firmly more full, more centered in the moment. And so what we're doing when we begin a process of vibrating the body and expressing energy vocally or just creating any form of vibration within the human complex, especially within the group setting, what we're doing is we're in training, we're, we're advancing and we're activating the frequency of the entirety of the human body. And for those of you that are familiar with timelines, with our ability to literally shift reality, for a lot of us, this is where this ability begins in thoughtful intentions and vibration of the human mind, body, spirit complex. We find that when we do this as a group, we are able to create great change. And so I'm going to say it now and we'll probably talk about it again later. What we are creating here today is a lot more than just a healing group of people that are coming together to advance our energy. We are also creating something much greater, much more serious. Within this group, even at this moment, is a much smaller group of multidimensional spiritual warriors who are at this very second being activated into your true abilities, into your true mission, into your true calling. I'm excited and honored to be greeting you and working with you in the coming year. We have a lot of work to do. And what is that work? It is recreating and restructuring the minds, the consciousness, and the thoughts of our realm, 
of our leaders and everyone on this earth plane that is seeking to destroy, control, or suppress human consciousness. Even at this very moment, those abilities are returning to you. Some of you know who you are, some of you don't know it yet, but you're feeling it in your body and you know it is time to become a true warrior. We are calling out and speaking to that version of you now. Thank you for gathering with us. And so the next phase of that earth mission begins today. And I'm also gonna tell you, this is the only time here today in which we're gonna talk about this stuff. So we're gonna get it out of the way. Sometimes people get a little weird when you're like, oh, really? You guys are gonna, you're gonna talk about money? But yes, we are, because the reality is on a certain level, what we're doing is we're creating an investment, we're creating a process, and I wanna let you guys know what you're signing up for when you choose to partner, when you choose to join us in this group. And so, some of you guys have been working with me for the past three years. This is the first time we have ever created a group or a brotherhood or a process or an army like this, whatever you want to call it. And so it does come with a few benefits for those of you guys that do choose to do individual work or group work with our classes on a greater level. And you can see it here on the screen. I promise this is the only time here we're going to be selling you stuff here today. But I want to make you guys aware of what we're doing and the benefits and the things that we're gonna be creating over the next few months. And so you do get a big discount when you choose to stay with us in this group. And I truly hope that you do because we have a lot of really incredible work to be doing. And for those of you guys who may not be aware, uh, we are amongst a very small group of individuals on this earth plane who have been deliberately activated to begin taking deliberate action to liberate this fourth density consciousness. And so this is a very real thing. For those of you guys that are choosing to join us and continue on with Patreon, I also want to let you know I'm going to open up a, a, a less expensive option. It's a $10 a month one um, for people that just want to show up because I know for some of us, this is an investment that we're making and we're choosing to continue along with the process. And so you guys can see it here on the screen. The most important thing I'd like you to be made aware of is down on the bottom there with the schedule of events that we have coming up in the coming months. First of all, beginning at the end of October, we're going to be getting a very, very specific multidimensional training process in which we're going to be learning how to open up the meridian structures in the body for the very specific purpose of creating defense, creating capability, helping us understand when we are being affected by an outside energy, how to understand that energy and how to begin to clear it from the body. We're going to be working in the coming months on opening up the meridians on a group level here in this group. But for those of you guys that want to continue on a much more specific level, I encourage you to join. Uh, please do join us. I'm also going to tell you this. I only say it verbally, but if you don't have money and you really want to be a part of what we are doing, please message me. There are a lot of us here. And a lot of you know that you can message me and say, hey, look, I really want to be a part of this. Can I please join you? And the reality is you can. There doesn't have to be a barrier toward learning how to truly advance your energy. And the reality is for even those of you guys that aren't going to be joining us, most of this stuff ends up on YouTube for free. But that said, what do we have coming up in the coming months? October 17th is the next official gathering of what we're going to be doing here. And uh, what we're going to be doing is working specifically on the timeline creation and downloading areas in the human body. It's the earth star chakra and also the soul star chakra. These represent like poles on a battery. And today what we're doing is beginning the first stage of that ignition process. In the coming months, we're going to be enhancing, centering, and creating more of a, a solidity within the reality that we're creating. And so um, we have a very, very important event coming up all the way down there at the bottom of the screen. It might be the most important thing that we have here today. It's on December 14th of this year, and that is a total solar eclipse. It is one of the most important alignments of our entire journey over the coming next two or three years in that it represents an actual opening in your physical timeline in which you can create tremendous tremendous change and so we're going to be gathering together here as the blue flame collective on december 14th um, for a very very important timeline unification process and so this is just to make you guys aware of what we are doing um, of the process of what we have scheduled i will also let you know that beginning in january of this coming uh 2021 um, we're actually going to be letting this group process be guided by the group conscience. And what we're going to be doing is taking a vote of the collective energy each month and looking at the energy centers that you guys want to work with, things that are important for the collective, things that we need as a group to continue to enhance and empower ourselves. And so 
um, beginning in January, you guys are going to be running this show and we're going to be continuing to disseminate and just, you know, put out little bits of stuff over the coming weeks. In a few days, probably after this, I am going to release a very important sh uh, sacral chakra clearing session from one of our recent classes. But just take a look at this stuff. This is what we're signing up for. And so this is the only time we're going to we're going to move on from the sales pitch area because it always it always makes me weird. You guys, I know how you guys feel about that stuff, too. But here we go. And so, oh, and thank you, Michael Mathis, shortly followed by Jupiter Saturn conjunction on the solstice. Thank you for mentioning that, actually. Um, my understanding is that creates a tremendous restructuring for certain individuals, and especially in terms of that which is deserved. And I could be wrong. For, so, for those of you guys that know me, you'll know I'm the least astrological psychic there is, but we're going to go ahead and continue, guys, because what are we here today to do? Understand who what we are, what are our strengths, what are our abilities, what is it that's even activating in you, what are those, you know, what is that next sense, that thing that's coming on, what is the thing, that skill that you are going to be using to assisting with, excuse me, to assist with the liberation of your planet, your soul group, your family, some people call it red pillin, whatever you want to call it, the next phase of this journey for many of us, I'm going to fast forward to find the others, understand your skill to develop and so what are we here to develop, guys? The star seeds wanderers, or what we might call those of other than Earth origin. And I'm just going to say it. A lot of you guys are here today. You guys are human hybrids. I know that's always a cringeworthy word when we hear that. <laughs> what? You know, some of us, and I guarantee you, there's a lot of people in this group. You're going to hear Matthew say that, and you're like, you're going you're gonna to feel that little cringe. And that's okay. Perfectly, perfectly natural. But the reality is, and we're going to be understanding this later on in this human journey, is that over the course of the lifetime, our DNA activates and changes. And the reality is we become more human by activating elements of our non-human selves. And so we are a group of human hybrids. Each and every day, each and every month, we become more and more of that. And so in addition to all the wild choices, contracts, decisions that we made prior to entering this realm, prior to being shot into this human body, prior to going through that amnesia layer and the birth canal in which we come out into this, you know, infant form and we have to remember each and everything, especially all those choices and contracts we made before we came in here. Well, as you guys know, that gets wiped. It gets pulled out of us and we have to spend the rest of our time here on earth going, what was it that we were doing? I know there's something I meant to, but I don't know how to, but I know I have to, each of us has that. Each of us has been through that. And if you're here today, it is, it is my firm belief that you have been experiencing that feeling at some stage in this journey. And feel free, let me know if I'm wrong. If you guys have any questions, throw them in the chat. I will get to you. Some of these abilities, some of these, these, these choices, and I'm going to say it once again. Some of you guys have heard me say this. It is very much like choosing a character in a video game. And I'm not saying it's like that for everyone. But for those of you that have had that experience, you're going to get a feeling when I say that. You're going to have this understanding, this piece of yourself is like, you know, I think I did. I think I did. Because we did. We chose our lives. We chose our parents. Well, that's always a heavy one. We chose our family members. Many of us chose what we were going to look like. We chose our faces. And yes, I know some of you guys will get angry when you hear this. We chose our bodies. We totally did for better or worse. Well, the reality is for better. But anyway, not to go on a rant here. Some of these abilities will come very naturally to us. Like those of us that just pick up music, some of us are able to sing. Some of us just naturally, we're just like, boom, I just do this thing. And then for others, it'll take a tremendous amount of work, a lot of development, a lot of tears. We really have to work at certain elements of what we're called to do. And in some cases, these special abilities or senses are held back by certain blockages in the human body. Most of the time, it's stuff like ego programming, self-awareness, or really acceptance for a lot of us, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness for a lot of us are some of the primary gateway points toward really, really unlocking what it is that we're doing here. But one of the primary focuses in the months to come is on developing and awakening these abilities in each and every one of you. And like I've said multiple times here already today, we do this by first learning the energetic systems of the human body and then healing the non-physical energetic blockages in the body along those very lines, those very pathways, energetic centers, 
in which these frequencies are created. In each case, they're different. We don't all have the same abilities, but we can see what they are there on the screen. And some of you guys are familiar with this. You've even seen me use similar slides. This is very common, a very, very common theme to the work that I do because I believe that in each and every one of us, every one of these frequencies and abilities is activating. For those of us who don't know what they are, clairvoyance, the ability, or rather the understanding of our ability to see psychically, to use the, you know, what some people call the visual cortex to peer into or view non-physical energy. I will say here today that I believe clairvoyance is one of the most misunderstood and also kind of just, it, it, it's, it's, it's overly sought, I think, by many of us in the spiritual community because we are taught that, you know, energy or psychic energy or multi-dimensional frequencies are things that are visual that we are meant to see and the reality is for many of us upon activating the ability of clairvoyance or the frequency of the third eye or what is essentially the multi-dimensional portal chakras at the sides of the head what we find is that we begin to perceive energy experience multi-dimensional you know even the time stream visually and so it is a very real thing that is happening but each and every one of us experiences the phenomenon or the ability of clairvoyance differently just like claircognizance and i will say claircognizance you guys what does that mean some of you guys aren't going to know but what does it mean it's the psychic knowing it's almost like this for some of us it's like a thought-based download you will encounter an individual a situation, you'll come into a social scene, you'll, you'll even see somebody on social media, like on Facebook, you'll just look at a person's face and you'll be like, I, I just, you just know, you don't know how you know, but you know. And it's not always a feeling, it's not like this word comes in and says it to you, it's just like this knowing, in my opinion and experience, as empaths, as multidimensional beings unpacking and activating our intuitive abilities, it's my experience that claircognizance for most of us is the first ability that will activate. And so why does claircognizance activate as the first ability? We're going to talk more specifically about that in a little while. There's a lot of information we're going to be going through today, but a lot of it has to do with the solar plexus, with the gut brain access, with that vagus nerve that we talked about in the beginning, and many other things. We'll be, we'll be going more into that in a little while. We also have clairaudience. A lot of you guys have heard of that, no pun intended. Uh, the ability to hear psychically. A lot of us at this stage, and it's always a dicey thing to say it, we're hearing voices, right? That's always delicate. What, what, we, we, what? This guy's talking about hearing voices? The reality is uh, there is a tremendous amount of auditory, psychic, and multidimensional information that is passed auditorily through individuals. And for some of us on the earth plane, we have misconstrued or, 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 or sort of scrambled or have been oppressed or influenced to the extent that some of us will hear very, very divergent or difficult or parasitic things going on in the mind. But one of the things that happens in fourth density are these auditory channels begin to activate in the human body. For those of us here that might know a little bit about the meridians, a lot of that comes from the triple warmer meridian uh, the functionality of the gallbladder meridian, believe it or not, and everything that passes around the sides of the ears will have an effect on how we perceive auditory psychic information. And so we're going to be working with some clairaudience skills in the coming months. Along with that, we have clairsentience. It's where we just feel. It's that empathic ability. For a lot of us, clairsentience, you guys, is also, I would say, and this is kind of an opinion, it's maybe the second, or along with claircognizance, to me, those are the most commonly and pr most prevalent activated senses because many of us right now you guys will find it on social media you'll find it with your friends and family you'll find it watching tv it doesn't matter where it is you'll come across a group energy or a scene or a situation whatever it is and you get this emotional feeling in your body and right now a lot of us we get this emotion and we're like we just instantly assign it to ourselves we get this feeling around people and we're just like we get it and we feel it. Well, for a lot of us, what we are activating is clairsentience. And so what that means is, and we're going to be unpacking how this works in the coming months, a lot of times when you are feeling others' energy or you experience an emotion upon encountering an individual, you might actually just be experiencing what they're going through in their body. And so um, one of the ways in which we unpack or interpret the specificity of emotional input, which leads us to the ability of clairsentience, it's through a thing known as the thymic chakra, which I'm pointing to here on this little teeny screen right here, right at the top of your chest. 
for those of you guys who aren't aware, it's one of the areas in which you are picking up a tremendous, tremendous amount of clairsentient information. We also have clairalience, clairgustance, psychic smell, psychic taste, um, which are always really, really fun ones. Those are really cool. We're also going to, hopefully, every now and then when we work with the sacral chakra, people experiencing will experience an opening of that taste. You'll begin to, and this is a crazy one for some people, you may taste energy. I know, it's a crazy one. You're going to encounter people and you'll get this sort of flavor in your mouth. And that's not always how it shows up. It may come in another sense. But there are many people on the earth plane, myself included, that upon activating or working with sacral chakra energy, they will taste or smell things a little bit differently. And so take it all with a grain of salt, guys. But um, that's what we're going to be working with here today. And so Miriam, thank you for being here. She says, as I understand it, comes from our smart part. Absolutely. Um, from the higher self, the higher self complex, what some people call the source field or the multidimensional kind of higher self. Absolutely. Um, the higher density energy bodies. And so what we're going to do really quickly before we go forward, I just want you guys to check out this text here on the screen. Look at what we have here. Because some of us here today are just now beginning to internalize, to feel, to realize that there is a whole other set of version. It's like skills, abilities, another version of you that's showing up. But some of us here, we're, we, we, we don't have any idea what is that. I know I'm called to be here. I know I, I just have this feeling I'm meant to join this thing or be a part of this process, but why or what? How do we make use of that? And so, so, you know, for those of you guys trying to understand, you know, what is my skill? What is my ability? Here's a few questions. In my opinion, these just kind of looking at the philosophical elements of these questions and where they stand and how they affect our lives, in my opinion, gives us a view or an idea about our senses, about the elements of ourselves. But ask yourself, what are your strengths? What are you good at? What are you naturally okay with? What situations or elements of your world are you able to handle that, oddly enough, other people can't? And likewise, what elements of your personality are just too much, too intense, too weird? What are those elements of your world, that version of you, that separate you from others, that make it hard for you to exist? Each and every one of us here, those empaths, you know, whether you're claircognizant, clairsentient, clairvoyant, whatever it is, for a lot of us, those senses are suppressed, they're held down, they're the elements of ourselves that our entire life we've been like, mm. no, 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 put, 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 put that all away, I can't, I just can't, you know, we've been trying to push that down, whether it be an emotion and knowing, a gut instinct, for some of us, we'll have these strange visions over the course of our life, and we'll be like, well, that is insane, that is crazy. For others, we've just been too much, we've been too intense, we've been on 11, while the rest of the world has been on 8 or 7, and it's been very difficult for us to get by in this world. It is my opinion each and every one of us here, we are an underdog. A lot of us here, we're like the weirdos, the awkward ones. You know, we've been kind of the outsiders. We haven't really been a part of. A lot of us here this entire life, you know, we've been amongst this human population. And no, I'm not going to say we're not human because we are, but we're also a lot more. But a lot of us here have been existing amongst this human population and been utterly and completely painfully aware painfully aware that there's just something else about you. Might be crazy, might be too much, might be beautiful, but whatever it is, it's almost a cheesy term at this point. It's a little bit extra. So those extra elements of ourselves at this stage of 2020, we're being called to repurpose, to reactivate, to heal, to release the distortions around the shame or the programming or the suppression the negative influencing, the victimization that we have experienced over the course of this life. Because many of us, we have had direct suppression in our lives of the sensory areas that will later on become your strongest intuitive abilities. And, you know, I'm just going to say it, myself included, I am one of those individuals for my entire life. I got all kinds of signals and ideas and feelings and crazy stuff around people. 
and in my case, I just thought it, you know, I just thought I was weird. I thought I was crazy. Like a lot of us here, I had a lot of addictions at earlier stages of my life. Tremendous, tremendous upheaval. It's part of what we call the maladies of the star seed. Those of us that come here into these physical forms, we agree to have these contracts, these experiences. In some cases, it is by design. It's what we agreed to. In others, it's been weighed upon us through victimization. In some cases, karmic choices. We came into this world and, you know, prior to incarnating in the human body, we're like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm going to have to deal with that one. We're going to have to deal with that one. I got to take that test again. We didn't do too good last time. And so we'll come in here with some acknowledgments, knowing that we're going to go through certain things. Now, the specificity to that in the human body is always different and individual to each of us. But the reality is, regardless of the origins of these blockages, these traumas, the too much elements of ourself, the intensity, whatever that may be, it is ultimately your responsibility, my responsibility, our responsibility as awakening beings to activate this version of ourselves. And it's kind of a cheesy phrase, but in order to begin turning the weaknesses and question marks in your life around into strengths and certainty and understanding, in order to awaken that version of yourself that can walk into a room and sense the people's energy and sense the vibe and understand what your contribution is, what your place is, what you are here to do, whether it is a passive or an active receiver or transmitter of multidimensional healing, in order to begin turning those, those weaknesses, those too much, the strangeness, the bizarreness, the intolerable, el intolerable elements of what you've become in this life into those strengths, into those abilities, we have to open up the blockages and the distortions and the emotional wounds. And for many of us, I'm just going to say it. You guys will all, you guys, a lot of you guys already know this. It's the inner child and it's healing the inner child. And so one of the things we're doing in this group is healing that element of ourselves. And so we're going to be encountering the inner child here today in our group work, in our clearing. But before we go on, once again, put any questions in the chat there. A lot of you guys that have been with me in classes and other events, you've seen this slide before. What is this essentially, you guys? This is a very incomplete breakdown of the human energy system with respect to chakras in the body over here on the right. And it's a little bit of a stylized thing that I created, just kind of piecing stuff together, but it's a creation or rather just a representation of what I believe to be some of the most active elements of the chakra system at this stage of the human game here on the earth plane. And so a lot of you guys have already heard of this stuff. A lot of you guys have read this specific information before, but it bears mentioning it's very important because what you're seeing on the right side of the screen here, at least with, with respect to the chakra system in the body are the areas that we are going to be working with for the coming year, opening up, enhancing, activating, each one of the areas on the screen pertains to an ability, a sense, an emotion, an experience, a situation, in certain cases, past lives, future lives, current lives. A lot of that energy is wrapped up within the chakras. Not all of it, though. There are many systems in the body. And so, as we all know by now, the human body is surrounded by an invisible torus-shaped field of energy. Within this field exists a complex, a complex excuse me, network of chakras, meridians, dimensional layers, and countless other energetic structures. As our awareness expands outside of the bounds of the physical body, it is crucial, it is crucial at this stage of the human game that we begin understanding the subtle flow of non-physical energy and the way its effects extend into every single layer of our third and also fourth dimensional physical human experience. In my opinion, knowledge of human energy systems is what is going to separate your knowledge of yourself, the motivations and the understandings of human nature. It's going to separate you. It's going to put you on an entirely different level from those people that are still hanging out at home, watching CNN, waiting to be told when to go get their injection. By understanding and beginning to develop our knowledge of the non-physical human energy systems, we gain a tremendous advantage. And so a lot of you guys already know about this stuff. And yes, thank you. I see your questions there. We'll get to those momentarily. Um, but a lot of you guys have already heard of this. You're going to know exactly what the chakras are. You're like, yeah, Matthew, I know. I know exactly what it is. Some of you guys are just hearing about this for the first time. And so wherever you are in this journey, we're just going to go over just a little bit. 
So most of us understand at this stage of the game that there are, you know, we could say seven primary internal chakras in the body, but what is a chakra? It's a spinning seal, disc, gateway, passage points, opening in the human body, in the non-physical, energetic, multi-layered elements of the human body. And so our chakras contain consciousness elements, past life elements, family of origin, bloodline experiences, emotions, consciousness, and many, many forms of non-physical energy. As we continue to progress in our physical containers here, many of us have heard of it. The energy rises upward. It's also called prana, kundalini, etc. This is an interesting point of, just a point of information for those of you guys, because I've actually received this question more than once lately. People ask, well, Matthew, what's the difference between chi or prana or kundalini? Well, the reality is they're all kind of one and the same. Um, I believe there is a bit of just a kind of a slight difference when we, you know, begin to describe the energy or excuse me, the, 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 the term kundalini. By my understanding, I think it, it, it references more prana or chi in activated motion. And so there is a little bit of a differentiation we can use with our understanding and the use um, of the term kundalini is that by my understanding, it is the energy in motion. And it's also the very same thing. And so we're talking about the same substance in the body, our life force essence. And so, like I said before, it's widely accepted there's seven, but the reality is you guys, and for those of us that are actually peering into and working with the non-physical human body, an interesting thing, in my opinion, occurs when we actually begin to be able to peer into the human body. And that's that you realize that there are so much more than these seven points in the chakra system. In fact, and you can see it here on the screen, you know, depending on your cultural perspective, you know, some people say there's three, some people say there's six, some people say there's, you know, it's like 14,000 or something. And that might be the, you know, the noddies. But in my opinion, you guys, in experience, it is absolutely irrelevant how many chakras there are in the human body. I believe that just by placing our conscious energy within certain areas of the body, it is possible to essentially create or to you know, begin to manifest the very function of a chakra at any point or any, you know, just any place in the human body. They're energy centers and points of passage of consciousness energy. And so, you know, we are going to be talking about many, many specific elements of chakras, how they work, how they get deactivated, because the reality is, you guys, some of us experience them as colors. Some of us experience them as, you know, gas clouds in the human body or swirling kind of, you know, whirlpools. Each and every person perceives this energy or this color wavelength different. That's one of the things that we talk about in the School of Multidimensional Intuition, because what we're discovering here in fourth density is that there is literally no one hard and fast absolute method by which humans perceive energy. Each and every one of us is going to have our own unique view. And for that reason alone, I like to say color wavelength is relative. It can shift. Sometimes you're going to be in a meditation working with your own energy and you're going to perceive this really wildly beautiful, you know, violet purple color. And if you're following this, you know, commonplace ascension teaching lingo, they're going to say you're in your crown chakra. And the reality is you might be. But the reality is what we're discovering in fourth density is that for each and every one of us, it is a little bit different. And in order to awaken our true strength, it's about understanding the individual differences and how to make use of those. And so in certain cases of old trauma, implantation, damage, trauma, you know, whatever it could be, chakras can and will appear to be deactivated. I think it's very important to mention because we hear a lot of talk in this ascension community about chakra removal, you know, chakra deactivation, chakra surgery. Um, and I'm going to tell you one thing, literally anything is possible at this stage. That's just my opinion. I believe anything is possible. Uh, I think it's incredibly impractical to remove a chakra from the human body. Uh, but what we can do and what we find with individuals that have extreme forms of trauma is that they can literally be deactivated. It's like certain, you know, rooms in your home, you might never turn on the lights, maybe not for months, maybe you don't even go in there. And I know that's a strange metaphor. But the reality is for some of us, these energy centers in the body have just been completely bypassed. And so what we're doing over the coming months is learning how to open those things up. And I believe the, you know, the, the, the overall reason why we do this is because over the course of the third and fourth density life cycle, the human body begins to process of chakra compression. 
in which those energy centers, whether it be four, whether it be 12, whether it be 22, whatever it is, at least on the internal levels of the human body, as we progress through these lifetime after lifetime of fourth density physical incarnation, and I'm going to say it, if you don't already know the fourth density incarnative cycle, you guys, it's still very human. You do have a human body in fourth density. It's your consciousness that begins to move outside of the human body. And when the consciousness begins to move outside of the human body, and, you know, for, for many of us, it's here in this lifetime, it is because those internal energy centers are beginning to move together. They're starting to compress. And for some of us on the earth plane, we are beginning to compress toward what they call the Dantian system. And what it is, is a collection of three primary energy centers in the body. It's not saying there are only three energy centers. There's still a tremendous amount of lattice and just, you know, etheric technology that exists outside of the human body. But what we're finding is as we progress through this fourth density awakening process, the internal elements of the human body begin to come together. And so that's why, it's not the only reason why, but it's one of the reasons why many of us are experiencing tremendous ascension symptoms. It's as if versions of ourselves are becoming compressed and squeezed and just pressurized. And so it's causing certain things to shoot out. We're acting out, we're feeling things, all sorts of you know turbulence is kicking up in the body. Some of it's physical, like Dana says, the lymphatic system as well. As we enter fourth density, that is one of the most active elements of the human body. Um, and we can, and we will begin working with the lymphatic system, maybe even in January, if that's something you guys are into. And so before we move on here, I'm just going to get to our questions. But at this stage of our collective evolution, it is critical that we become aware of the phenomenon of negative energetic manifestations, how we are sending, receiving energy, and especially you guys, especially the level to which our developing chakra system can be affected by a host of conditions, emotional energy, frequency interference, etheric attachment. And right now, a lot of us are getting a tremendous amount of, you know, frequency interference from media, from our phones, from the environment, all sorts of stuff. The reality is every single element of that is real. The level to which it affects each of us is entirely different based on your makeup and what's going on, but it's part of what we sign up for upon coming in here. I call it the maladies of the star seed. In the future, we're going to talk a lot more about that. But before we move on here, I'm going to grab a few of your questions here. Somebody asked about addictions earlier, and I want to get up to that. That is a very, very good question. Thank you for that. We have Brent here. He says, you mentioned addiction contracts and experiences. I'm curious your take on that topic, including codependency. Um, I believe, in, or rather, Brent, I'm just going to give you my interpretation of that experience through my own kind of life. I believe that, you know, Matthew and this human body and probably a lot of other people came in with a predetermined agreement to experience a form of addiction. In some cases, you know, it would be this substance, that substance. I believe it was an aspect and a contract that I came in with. And part of one of the journeys and the things that I chose to overcome in this life was understanding why and how that happened and what it meant for me and what it was that I need to heal. Um, in my case, um, I believe that that was also exacerbated by certain types of entity attachments or what is essentially what some of us will experience kind of like an infestation of energy in the body. And one of the places in which that energy will reside for many of us is within the liver and within the spleen. Um, and to make it even more specific and maybe a little bit weird, Brent, there's also a phenomenon that Lisa Renee calls addiction webbing. Um, and I have actually encountered what I believe to be that phenomenon within the human body. I've noticed that uh, within layers of the lungs. I've noticed that within the liver, possibly within the spleen itself when it comes to addiction webbing. But you can think of these things kind of like, uh, you know, cobwebs that will literally hang out up in the corner of your room. And a lot of us will just have them hanging out up there in the corner. I guarantee you somebody on this call here today is going to look up in the corner of their ceiling and just see those old cobwebs hanging out in there. One of the ways in which we understand just the phenomenon or the residue or the frequency of addiction is that it will be emotional experiences, traumas, elements of trapped energy from our bloodline. In some cases, karmic stuff will hang out in certain organs and certain meridians. And so uh, we call that addiction webbing. I think it also will pertain to the experience of codependency. 
Um, and it can just be any disproportionate sharing or reliance upon energy of others, other substances, whatever that is. Um, some of us will come in preloaded with that experience. Excuse me. Others, it will be an experience that we ch choose to have. Um, in each and every case, I do believe that it is absolutely something that we can overcome. But, you know, one of the issues is, that, you know, is that it's also different for each and every one of us, the exact, the exact process that will go to release those blockages. And so, thank you, thank you. And thank you for those of you guys that have to leave, no worries. You're going to get a recording of this, so don't worry about it. Some of you guys are going to hang out for just a little while. Some of you guys are going to play this back later. We're going to be here for a little while today. Um, if you guys know my classes, you know we're going to talk on for a while. But don't worry, you do get a recording, and we are going to take a break. If anyone needs to go to the bathroom before our energy clearing today, don't worry. There is plenty of time. I see a very good question down there. Mario says, anybody addicted to cracking knuckles of their fingers? You know, actually, Mario, I do that as well. Um, and there, you know, maybe you can share some of your analysis as to why. I think it's one of the sort of nervous processes that humans will go through. There may be additional layers of why, but yeah, that is a, that is a real thing. I feel you. And thank you, Z. She says, reset of voice box, reprogramming from AI expression forms to organic soul frequency emission. Thank you for that comment. Absolutely. Michael Mathis says English is pretty wacky. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here, my friend. It is good to see your face. And so, yeah, thanks you guys. Let us know if you have any additional questions before we move on. We are all, I am definitely addicted to sugar as well, Dana. Thank you. Thank you for that. Brent says cracking knuckles releases stored energy. It might. I have a theory it could on a certain level contribute to inflammation within the hands. Um, but you know, you guys at this point, what doesn't? Um, yeah, I'm being a little sarcastic there, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. Please drop all your questions in the chat, anything else you wanna ask about. We're gonna start getting into some of the specifics of what we are doing here today, the areas and the energy centers that we're gonna be working with, especially as to why and what it is that we're doing. And so, um, Miroslav says, can we live on prana only? Probably, but I don't know if the human body's set up for it yet. I know there's a few people on the earth plane that are, that are, uh, I, I forget the word, but uh, yeah, they're, you know, I'm sure there's some of us that are able to just absorb energy. We are getting there though. So one of the primary areas that we're gonna be first visiting here in this collective activation here today is the throat chakra. Most of us have heard of it. Most of us have an understanding. We've had, you know, maybe we've had energy work. A lot of us here are healers. A lot of us here are already familiar with this energy center, but if you're not, that's okay. Regardless, we're going to talk a bit about it. So the throat chakra, as many of us know, rules the tone and frequency of conscious energy communicated through the human body. Well, there are many forms of energy communicated and projected through the human body. The throat chakra governs vocal expression in my opinion, above all else. In fact, I believe it is number one vocal expression manifesting energy center within the body. I also think it's absolutely one of the most important energy centers to activate, to clear, and to make use of at this stage of the journey because we need to be heard. And if you're a member of this group that has been gathered here today to activate your energy and to begin your true multidimensional strengths, we need to activate the throat. We have to begin speaking up in this world. We have to begin using our voice. And so let's talk a little bit more about that throat chakra. Well, first off, you can see that image over there. The primary organ of the throat chakra, I'll just say it, it is the thyroid, it's the vagus nerve, it's the vocal cords, the larynx, esophagus, mouth, tongue, all of those areas all involved within the energy of the throat chakra. If you want to get technical, I think it, you know, some of some people think that, you know, the true frequency of the throat chakra emits from the, I think it's the esophageal um, nerve plexus or something right in the back of the neck. And that may be the case, but in my opinion, I believe the throat chakra is a collection of the frequency and just energetic wavelengths of everything within that area of the body. And so yes, color perception is very relative, but most people, you guys, most of us, when we sort of peer into the energetic layers of the human body, we will experience the throat chakra as being a color that's very blue. It's kind of universal, but it's not always, not always that color. And so today in our clearing, we are gonna be using some toning. We're gonna to be using a very common root word, hung. Notice the NG at the end, hung. 
We're going to be using this to begin creating a receptacle opening within the throat chakra and moving energy from back to front. Some of you guys were in the chakra class that we did a couple months ago, um, and we're going to be opening the throat in a very, very similar method. So we have a good question here. Charlene says, through practicing Qigong, can negative attachments be released, cleared by the Qi without the practitioner actually directing the Qi to do so? Does Qi even have an effect on negative attachments? Yes. The answer, in my opinion and experience, Charlene, is yes to every single one of those questions. In my opinion and experience, direct experience, just by beginning to enhance, to work out, to stretch, to open up the human body through something like Qigong, is going to begin to physically raise the frequency of your body. And for some of us, certain old behaviors, mannerisms, ideas, outlooks, it's like they just begin to fall away. Um, and so, yes, the, the sort of operative force by which we release or work with, enhance or activate the human body is usually through the mobilization of that chi energy in the body. And so um, all those questions, absolutely. So thank you. Nearly every aspect of our expression is affected or moderated on some level by the openness and the tonal integrity of the throat chakra. All of this energy combined, it's absorbed, it's interpreted, and then it gets retransmitted out into the world via not only how we speak, but how you present, the expression that you hold on your face when you encounter people, your body language, the way you hold yourself, your eye contact, your breathing, I mean, on and on and on. The throat chakra, it is not, you know, the number one ruler of all of those, you know, forces within the body, but when it comes to how we express, and the way we make use of those things, in my opinion and experience, it is the most, it is absolutely the most useful energy center to, you know, begin to activate. And so, thank you, Jerry Lee. She says, what would you say the difference is in practicing Qigong versus Kundalini in terms of effects in the body? Well, I think it's going to be different for each of us. Um, I think that, you know, for those of us who are trying to awaken and enhance and, you know, open up the meridians and the energetic pathways in the body, for those of us that are desirous of experiencing reverse aging, the end to illness, to literally truly transforming your human body, both Kundalini Yoga and practicing Qigong are going to create that energy in the body. Now, me personally, I have practiced Qigong uh, obsessively for the past three years, and so that's the system that I tend to work with, um, but we're going to talk more about that later. Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, let's get back to the throat chakra, you guys. <clears throat> throat chakra consciousness issues often have to do with how we express our own understanding of ourselves, the energy inside us, various stages. It's about our faith, identity, how we assert ourselves, express ourselves. And we've said this before, but for those who have had extreme suppression of our self-identity in early childhood, any kind of abuse, any kind of suppression, this is one of the first places that gets shut down, that gets kind of closed off. As children, most often we just are taught to don't say anything, don't speak. You're seen, maybe you're not heard, all of those things. In order to fully awaken our intuitive potentials, many of us are going to need to begin releasing the inner pressure, the emotions, the old experiences, all of those elements of ourself that get suppressed or tied down or victimized, for a lot of us, the emotional or the expressive energy of that that lies within the throat over the course of our lifetime, it just gets just squeezed down there. And some of us later on in our 40s or maybe, maybe even earlier at certain stages after really, really suppressing throat chakra energy in the body, some of us begin to, you know, get autoimmune disorders thyroid disorders. We begin to experience wasting diseases that have no specific cause, no true known cause in the body. And for a lot of us, it's because we're dealing with a bottleneck in the human body on an energetic, on an emotional level. It's not the only cause, but it bears mentioning. What we find is when we are able to truly open this energy center, it begins to create a release of pressurization in the body. And so when the throat is successfully activated, some people, it's very important to mention, will begin to suddenly seem to shift. They suddenly start to change on very, very dramatic levels. Some of us have had friends, <clears throat> excuse me, family members, people that we've known in this world, and you know you haven't seen them in a while. They show up a couple years later, maybe a year later. 
they're carrying themselves differently. They look you in the eyes differently. They speak differently. They present themselves. A lot of them, you know, suddenly they just switch, snap. They start this whole other thing. They're like, oh, yeah, I haven't seen me in a couple of years. Now I'm doing blank. And it's this whole other version of themselves. What we're finding is, and it's not for everyone, upon truly opening and releasing this throat energy, some of us begin to communicate an entirely different version of ourselves into the world. I will even say it. it's important to mention because this happens to some people. It happened to me specifically. It is a real thing. There are cases of spontaneous activation of psychic gifts such as mediumship, spirit communication, light language channeling, singing, toning, even a very interesting phenomenon known as xenoglossy. It's where people will just suddenly begin speaking a different language out of nowhere. They just start speaking a language they have no knowledge of. Um, I actually had a direct experience of that in 2016, in which um, I was just having a conversation with a friend and we were walking through Mount Shasta actually at the time and there was a group of German people, some older German people having a very animated conversation. And as we walked by and I was just talking to my friend, I noticed and she noticed I suddenly began speaking in German and I don't know German. I've never learned the German language other than a couple random lessons in ninth grade in the early 90s. Um, I have no knowledge of that language, but for a couple sentences, I suddenly begin speaking a completely unknown language. And what we're finding is at some stages in the earth experience, some of us will, you know, an energy center or frequency will become activated to the extent that things like that will happen in the body. Some of you guys here today, as a result of the work we are doing here today and also in the coming months are going to begin to open your throat chakra to the extent that, you know, maybe you're not going to be suddenly speaking all these languages, but I can tell you what you will be doing. You're going to be showing up online on videos in actual social situations. You're going to be looking people in the eye and you're going to be talking about new elements of yourself. You're going to be projecting yourself, explaining and allowing your truth the true version of yourself to be heard and to be seen. And so that's the throat chakra, you guys. It's also a bunch of other things. It's not just that. And so Miroslav says, once activated throat chakra, how do we maintain that clear state? That's a really, really good question. There are many ways. I think for most of us, we have to continue to express the most realist, authentic version of ourselves. And this is just, you know, also something that I have experienced Miroslav is that when I am willing to be 100% authentic and not to hold back, and we do it with respect, of course, but in my opinion, behaviorally, that's one of the ways that we can continue to keep this energy center clear because a lot of us just day to day basis will be encountering people and we get this feeling and we're like, uh, and we don't say anything. And so, in my opinion, one of the ways we keep that throat chakra clear is we speak up. And so, there's lots of other ways, lots of other ways. Brent says a wonderful way to free the throat is to take a bath or submerge in a full body of water. Actually, 100%. That is a very, that's a, that's a really good, thank you, Brent. That is a really, really good way to do that. Singing alone as well is going to begin to stretch and open and flex those vocal cords. That is a real thing. Cassandra says, I get French words popping into my head all the time. Um, that is a real thing, Cassandra. My son randomly years ago started speaking uh, Russian out of nowhere, he's like, I'm gonna start learning Russian. Um, that is a thing that will occur. Um, certain elements of past lives, things that you've known in the past will start to show up in the body. In the coming months, we're gonna be talking more about where that comes from, how that activates. Some of you guys that were in the recent chakra class will already know uh, some of it comes from the multi-dimensional portal chakras, but um, that's another can of worms. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Throw any other questions in there. We all are, we are also going to talk about the solar plexus, and you guys, mainly the reason for this. I want to be very specific. One of the things we're discovering as we move into these fourth density wavelengths, as the human body activates, is that <clears throat> excuse me, there is a direct link. It's like a pipeline. It's like a little tube, if you want to get weird, uh, that connects the solar plexus chakra to the throat chakra. 
Um, I believe it's, 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 you know, we could, we could, you could imagine it metaphorically like bypassing, you know, elements of a machine. Sure. You can make it work better. You can route energy around these certain things. You can really, really push, or you can even make your car turbo, you know, by, by, by just pumping a lot of oxygen into it. I know I'm going into weird, you know, um, metaphors here, but we are finding that the human body in fourth density has a similar bypass, a similar linkage. And if you wanna get even more technical, you guys, let's get specific. The solar plexus and the throat chakra have a very symbiotic relationship with each other that we're discovering in fourth density can lead to great advancements in power. And when I say power, I mean power of projection of yourself, your consciousness, you into the world. The problem is, is that it can be used both positively and negatively. We're going to talk about that more in a minute, but solar plexus chakra, also known as Manipura in Sanskrit. It's considered by most of us at this stage, depending on what, you know, Ascension lingo school you subscribe to, to be one of the, one of the primary holding spaces for our overall internal energetic momentum of what some call the ignition point of our internal intuitive gut instinct. Most of us perceive it as yellow or gold. It's important to mention because for those of us that are familiar with the law of one, uh, some of you guys have heard of the concept of yellow ray activation. And so uh, just on a greater level on the earth plane right now, we are experiencing a great activation of the solar plexus. And it's one of the reasons why we're here today. It's one of the reasons why we've been called to enhance our intuition and activate our bodies is because this solar plexus is activating. And so we're gonna be doing some work on that here today, but what does it pertain to? Well, you can see that image there on the right. Solar plexus isn't really just about one singular organ, energy center, nerve plexus, whatever you want to call it. In my opinion and experience, it is a collection of the frequencies contained within the pancreas, liver, gallbladder, stomach, spleen, and both intestines. It is the entirety of the frequency of everything in the abdomen or the gut. I believe that the solar plexus comprises the totality of an area rather than one specific Place in the body. And so um, you guys can think of this very much like a whirlpool, like a cauldron, like this, this, this big, this huge bubble of energy existing within the human body that when consciously tapped into, consciously enhanced, and especially when it's consciously cleared, can lead to some of the greatest energetic and spiritual momentum that you will ever have in this life. And so Solar plexus chakra is one of the primary receiving and distribution centers for what we call the frequency of truth in the body. If you don't already know, it's one of the most important skills that we are unlocking in this strange collective group here. But in order for us to accurately activate and begin to gauge this frequency in the body from an outward perspective, we have to first undergo a deep healing of any discordant or limiting, especially self-limiting frequencies from this energy center, as it has a huge impact on how our body translates intuition. For those of you guys that are here today that are just beginning this journey and you're just wondering, man, how do I, how do I become more intuitive? I see all these people awakening these abilities and I know I, I know I can feel energy on some level, but it's like, I just, I don't know how to understand my gut instinct. I don't know which way it's turning me this way or that way. The solar plexus is one of the starting points when we begin to balance that energy and it's entirely dependent on self-trust, self-trust. And so we will be working more on that in the coming moments here. As we continue through this ascension process, the solar, excuse me, the solar plexus chakra begins to shift in frequency, much like the earth star chakra, which we're gonna be working with in October. And that they begin to transmit their differently, excuse me, their energy very, very differently. We just begin to experience that energy on a whole different level. And so this is where things begin to work with and interact with the throat chakra on a much greater level. And I'm going to tell you guys really good examples of when the, the, the throat and the solar plexus are linked. What happens with certain individuals on the earth plane, if the heart, the thymic chakra, and the more empathic energy centers are not activated, people begin to project energy very forcefully. We see it with politicians. We see it with people in media. We see it with certain individuals in this sort of ascension soul group that are constantly dispensing or projecting 
very intense information, individuals that also don't have or have not activated the heart or thymic chakra centers will be more likely to absorb or receive this deactivated frequency from others. And what we're finding is many people on the earth plane are, are, are having the heart and the thymic chakras bypassed um, is very, very common right now. We're seeing this with people that are uh, involved in the protest movements and some of the political action groups in which they suddenly begin to express or like go into these crazy waves of just dominational group think mob-like energy. Um, some of that comes from a deliberate hijacking and a bypassing of the heart chakra. And what they're doing is making use of that incredible energetic momentum in the solar plexus and pushing that energy all the way around the heart chakra. And it's like, it allows us to move forward in certain ways that for some of us are utterly hijacked, very, very negative. And so um, what we're doing here today is we're enhancing the energy of the heart and truly making use of that solar plexus energy so that you can understand the frequency of truth. So that you can also notice in others when that energy is bypassed. And if you wanna know what it looks like, you guys, turn on the news turn on CNN, also Fox News as well, and look at the people that are projecting themselves out in media positions. In most cases, those are really good examples of individuals that have completely bypassed the heart and thymic chakra resonance and are just dispensing and disseminating information. Um, it's a very, very interesting thing to watch, but before we go on a huge long rant about it, um, today is also gonna be for some of us here an activation of claircognizance in the body. I'm just going to say it straight up. When we begin to truly open that solar plexus, some of you guys in the coming days and weeks, you're just going to kind of know. You're just going to start to know things. You're just going to feel it. You're going to come around individuals. You're going to be in situ. <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> you're going to be in situations in which you previously felt uncertain or unguided. You didn't know what to do. And upon opening that solar plexus, or at least activating, enhancing, respinning that chakra, we start to experience a level of certainty and cognizance in the body um, that is huge. It is very, very huge for a lot of us. So something to be made aware of. Um, so yeah, we are going to be using a root word with the solar plexus here today. You guys can see it on the screen. It's important to mention because we're going to be using a lot of physical and auditory vibrations in this group. And that is, you can just allow yourself to feel this energy. Round. Round. You notice, once again, the NG on the end of it. I know sometimes the audio gets a little low, and I also want to mention, during some of these sessions, the toning might become very quiet. Every now and then, there's a compression element with Zoom and some of the software that will kind of soften or deaden the auditory transmission. The reality is, don't worry, it reaches the human body anyway. And so I would love to see you guys doing Kung Fu while I'm doing this. I would love that. I'm going to be honest with you, Mario, when I start warming up and getting ready for sessions, there is very much a feeling within the body that makes one want to begin to move and do this sort of, you know, really spiritual warrior exercises. That's part of what is awakening within us. And so if you feel that, within you, that is a real thing. And that is a version of yourself, in my opinion, that is awakening once again. And so um, if all goes as planned in the coming months, I'm gonna be giving you guys a video of actually a Qigong routine that I use every day. Um, I think we gotta upgrade our technology a little bit uh, before we do that. But yes, it is definitely coming. Thank you, Charlene, I actually did as well. Thank you very much. And so this is the most important area today, you guys. I know we've been talking a very long time, right, everybody? We've been here all day and we do have a little bit more work to do. I wanna let you guys know that if you get tired, I know I talk a lot of you, you can totally take a break. You can grab a drink, you can go to the bathroom. We are going to take a formal break before our energy clearing. Um, I believe, yep, it's right after this slide. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about our energy clearing and what we're doing and especially you guys, this crazy sacral chakra. Now, once again, <clears throat> some of you guys were in the chakra course we did a couple months ago. And so there are some individuals here today that have been through the very distinct attunement and ignition of this conscious frequency in the body. 
But before we talk about the blue flame specifically, we're going to talk about the sacral chakra, something that we mentioned in the beginning, the hijacking of human co-creative ability, of human also sexual energy and our ability to create reality as a result of the creation of that energy in the body. And so one of the places in which we are the most hijacked, the most affected, the most oppressed, the most implanted, the most influenced, if I didn't already say that, is in the sacral chakra. On collective levels, on individual levels, um, our co-creative abilities have been utterly, completely distorted and hijacked on the earth plane. And for many of us, not all of us, but for many of us, that energy or that hijacking or the most potent source of activating energy in the body lies within the sacral chakra. And once again, I'll say it again, everybody, because we have a lot of experts here. We all know it is not the only one, but today for the purpose of entraining, activating and developing that new template that new fourth density awakened, empowered, capable, intuitive version of yourself, we will be igniting a new flame in the sacral chakra. And so sacral chakra characteristics can vary, as we know, depending on your cultural background or belief systems. But one thing we all seem to agree on at this stage of the earth game is that this is one of the primary processing centers for our sexual and creative energy in the body. It's not always a sexual thing. It isn't, but it is a source of passion and it is an energy center of passion and creation. And so a lot of us understand the energy, just like the perceptual color-based energy of the sacral chakra is usually orange or it's kind of yellowish, it's kind of fiery. And some individuals at certain stages of activation, and this is, and it will be for many of you here today and for some of you in the future, and I'm gonna say it, it's a gradual thing that takes place it's a shift that takes place within the structure of the human body. And it's a very bold statement, but some of you beginning here today are going to begin to perceive the sacral energy center in the human body as a blue flame. A blue flame. For some of us, that chakra begins to turn blue here today. Or for others, those that have a very keen perception of the internal energy centers, you may experience that internal fire or the orange fire, the yellow fire, whatever that internally placed color of the sacral chakra is. And some of you around the outside of that, for those of you guys that have activated multidimensional intuitive, you know, visual ability will almost perceive it's like a blue ring or an outer shell or a circle in some cases that will surround the chakra. And so everyone will know the feeling of the sacral chakra. It's not always a sexual feeling. It's very important to mention because for a lot of us here, we, 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 we will sort of, you know, feel these energies of stimulation or we'll get a desire, we'll get this feeling in the body, we'll become stimulated on some level, an element of ourselves will be like, ooh, and it's, you know, it's not necessarily a sexual feeling, but some element, it's like this flame will get lit up within us and we're like, huh, what? You'll feel this tug, this pull, this passion, this desire. One of the easiest ways to begin to understand the sensation or the feeling of the sacral chakra for a lot of us is that sort of activation of desire within the body. And many of us will feel it down there, sometimes in the perineum, sometimes it is in the reproductive or the genital region. Sometimes you guys, it's up and down your spine. I saw somebody commenting in here earlier that they get this, this movement of energy up and down the spine. For those of us that have an opened sacral chakra that are able to make use and transmit that energy, whether it be consciously or not, you will probably be more likely to feel that. Janelle Lynn also notices, or she, she, she mentions the Hara line as well. Absolutely, 100%. Um, also known as the conception vessel, also known as the Shishumna. Um, absolutely, excuse me, yeah, yeah, I think it is a Shishumna as well. Yeah, very, very, very real and so, we, and so we have a good question here as well. Adriana says, why is this why evil power system is targeting the children sexually? It is one of the reasons, absolutely, um, because this is one of the most potent energetic centers for creation. It is also, you know, like it says here on the screen, it is very heavily implanted, very heavily affected. Um, it is possible to completely hijack and reconfigure the, you know, the sexual tone or the energy of the sacral chakra with early childhood trauma. Um, and don't worry, we're not going to go too far into, you know, the inner workings of that, but it is one of the most pliable, programmable, 
and hijackable energy sources within the body. It's also the reason why we need to bring this back. We need to reclaim our co-creative abilities. And for some of us, it is also reclaiming our sexuality that has been taken from us. But for each and every person here, it is a different frequency and a different feeling. And so the sacral chakra rules the way we express emotions and sensuality in our lives. It's one of the most fertile points of activation. But the stage of fourth density, because it interacts so heavily with the emotional pH value. First time we've mentioned that here today. Very, very important concept for you guys to understand. Don't worry, we're going to talk more in the coming months. But the emotional pH value of the body is changing on a mass level. And what do I mean by emotional pH? Well, we understand, at least some of us on a limited level, the acidity measurements of, you know, a substance, whether it be water, anything on the earth plane will have, you know, a, a measurable level of alkalinity versus acidity. And so when we talk about the emotional or energetic pH value of the body, we're talking about the sort of tone or the flavor or the scent or the frequency, especially the emotional frequency that exists within certain areas of the body. One of those, the sacral chakra. Another one is the pericardium meridian. Um, another one of those also, I would say the spleen chakra, very, very affected by overall energetic pH value. And so what do I mean by that? Some of you guys have been having an experience for years in which you will always attract the same type of people, the same type of experiences. Some of us will just have this thing where we're just always attracted to narcissists or they always find us. And that's just one form of how energetic pH value works. But um, it is an overall tendency or a tone or in some cases even a bait frequency that will draw in certain types of emotional experiences, situations, energies, individuals, in certain cases, entities, non-physical, you know, consciousness can also be attracted. You can think of it like, you know, a field or a farm. And, you know, this farm has been growing corn for, you know, 20 years. We always grow corn in this field. Well, the human body has a similar thing. For most of us, it's the pericardium. It's not the only place, but it will get set up to attract a certain type of experience, a certain type of emotion. We will find, in certain cases, we're only attracted to those type of individuals and we'll know they're wrong for us. Sometimes we'll be attracted to situations. It'll be risky situations. Whatever it is, it's not always a negative thing, but we find that the emotional pH balance of the body is very, very heavily affected and also moderated by the tone of the sacral chakra. And so one of the reasons why we begin to ignite the blue flame, this conscious frequency within the sacral chakra is because it allows the upward motion, what is essentially a graduation or an upward movement of this frequency through the body. And so let's talk about the blue flame. I know we're going on and on, you guys. You guys are doing really well. Once again, throw any questions in the chat throw any questions in the chat. Thank you. Z says attraction doesn't necessarily mean you should have sex or be together with that person. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that because I think that is an important thing for just us to be made aware of on the earth plane as the sacral chakra for us on just a collective level begins to activate. We start feeling very, very differently about those connections, about certain intimate friendships, about just things in this world one of the ways in which our conscious or co-creative conscious energy is getting hijacked is through the energy of shame. When we feel an experience, a sensation, things happening in the body. And once again, you know, it's not always sexual, but one of the killers, one of the true suppressionary frequencies of the sacral chakra, you guys, is shame. It's going to shut down that energy center in your body. It just causes us to just fold inward and it really, really limits ourselves. So we're going to be working with shame. And one of the holding places of shame in the body in the coming months, you guys, just so you know, some of us already know, it's the liver. Anyway, we're going to talk about the blue flame. Some of you guys have heard of this already. The blue flame is one of the seven primordial flames or ancient frequencies of multidimensional energy that exists within the non-physical ancestral layers of our DNA. In my experience, I first encountered the blue flame after an event known as Dimensions of Disclosure in 2019. A few days after I came home from that event, I was getting ready to do a session with a client just like normal. 
And I was beginning to do Qigong here just at my home, doing my little warm up routine. And, and as I bent down, specifically to do a Qigong posture known as carrying the moon. Some of you guys are already doing that movement. Uh, as, as I bent down and placed my hands toward the ground to begin this Qigong posture where you raise your hands above your head and hold them. As I bent down, I began to feel, it's almost like there was liquid, there was energy underneath me. I began to move my hands and wave them back and forth and it was like I was feeling liquid, non-physical, invisible liquid underneath me, around my feet, and I bent down and I moved my hands around in it, and I was utterly blown away. It was about 9 a.m. in the morning <laughs> on a weekday, and I was just doing a workout, getting ready to do a session, and suddenly this frequency came in. And tears began to pour down my face, my body began to shake, I began to hear and feel words in my body and my mind. And I was told, we are the keepers of the blue flame. We are the keepers of the blue flame. We are the keepers of the blue flame. Over and over again in my head, it was like a song that was playing. And internally, I was shown this, whether it be a realm or a dimension or a past life or a place, whatever it was, it was a place in which there were groups of us. Maybe they were devotees, maybe they were members of an order, maybe they were spiritual seekers. Whoever we were at this stage of our existence, we gathered together in this realm or this place, a very large pyramid complex, and we would walk along these pathways that had been carved into the earth. So they were like grooves or circuits that had been placed into the earth, and we would walk along these pathways as a group, tracing our path toward this very large pyramid complex. Upon entering this pyramid complex, we surrounded what appeared to be an altar or a placement, a structure, in the center of the floor, in the base of this pyramid. And at the top of the structure was a small pillar that had been placed in front of us. There was a dish of water, like a trough, or not necessarily a cauldron, but a shallow dish of water. And upon gathering together in a group around this altar, or this dish, or this water at the base of the pyramid, the members of this group and myself begin to vibrate. We begin to create a sound. In looking back, I don't know if it was a sound that we were creating or if it was a sound of that realm or of that place. But upon the creation of that sound, within the water at the base of the pyramid, a blue flame began to erupt, began to pour out of this dish. And in sequence, each and every one of us reached forward into that blue flame and we drank it into the body. It went down through our organs, through our chakras, through our energy centers, through our nadis, through our meridians, and it gathered around the sacral chakra, creating a blue flame, a circuit, a beginning, a spark, a new frequency within the human body. And in that moment, I was shown a map or a grid, an outline of what I believe to be a realm or a world, possibly this one. And I was shown that our task at this stage of the journey is begin to reignite that blue flame. I was told that the blue flame lies at the base of the pyramid. The blue flame is the source of divine willpower, divine freedom and truth. It is the flame that ignites all others. And at that stage of the journey, my assignment was to seek those others. And I was shown a map, a grid, these little blue dots, wherever they were all over the world or this realm. And our mission is to reactivate that frequency within us. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today. Today we will be participating in that very unique process of lighting the blue flame within each of us for the purpose of activating the next stage of unfoldment of your divine plan, your mission in this life. So we said it before, I'm gonna go over it again here before we go to the next stage. We're gonna take a break in a few moments. This process once again is known as linking the flame. And it takes an individual form for each of us, depending on your own unique makeup, your frequency, 
your chosen mission parameters, the next version of you that's showing up, whatever that next set of skills is, when we ignite the energy of the blue flame within the body, we begin the purification, the receiving, the activation of divine will, the choices we made, that ancient lineage begins to open up to us once again. And so I'd like to mention it, you guys, here today, because we're going to be using a very important spiritual tool. It's been a big part of the last course we did. It's something that has been given to me through my work in interfacing with what I believe to be a multidimensional higher self council of beings that have stepped forward to guide Matthew and many others. It's not just about me on this earth plane. It is my belief that some of them call themselves the council of nine. I've also heard to it, you know, referred to as an alliance council. I don't know what the true name of it is, but I know they have given us tools, they've given us teachings. And one of the things we're going to be using here today is what I call a capsule phrase. It's a series of words or syllables uttered from the human body with reverence and intention upon the creation of these phrases and the emittance of that phrase out of the human body. It becomes like a capsule, like a tube. It is a phrase that within it contains a feeling, an idea, a frequency, an experience, an energy center, a chakra, an organ, a smell, a scent, a color. It is a multi-dimensional frequency capsule of experiential information. We have the ability as humans to begin the creation and the transmittance of that energy from the body. And so today we're going to be using a very special frequency capsule phrase for the activation specifically of that blue flame in the body. And so we are gonna take a break in a few moments. You guys are doing great here. What I'm gonna do is just allow yourselves to receive this energy. We're just gonna give you a little bit of this frequency capsule phrase here. What we're doing is we're actually seeding our consciousness and it's like receiving a handout for the next phase of your assignment. So just allow this energy to reach you. Take a deep breath in. Yeah, yeah, that is our capsule phrase, our ignition capsule, if you want to call it that. It is one of the methods that we teach in the School of Multidimensional Intuition that allows the human body to transmit an entirely specific wavelength of information, intention, emotion, healing, anything. And I do mean anything. And so this frequency capsule is what we're gonna be using here today in our clearing to ignite, to enhance, to heal, and to purify, to take back the energy of that sacral chakra to begin reusing, reassigning, taking back our co-creative abilities. And we're also going to be enhancing that throat chakra and the solar plexus. And so <clears throat> please throw your questions in the chat, guys. We are going to take a break. I know we've been here all day. And if you guys know me, you know, we're going to go on and on. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for your comments. This is a good time to put your questions in the chat. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. I would like everybody, if you can, you know, maybe go to the bathroom, maybe just stand up, walk around, just kind of move your body a little bit. Some of you guys will even do a couple of Qigong moves just to kind of open up your, your body. Um, you can grab some water if you want. Um, what we're going to do is take a real quick break. I'm going to let you guys insert some questions or comments. Um, and when we come back, what we're going to be doing is beginning our energetic activation here today. We're going to be getting this blue flame activation and you can see it on the screen. In the meantime, feel free to check out what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be using some capsule phrases or excuse me, one of them, and we're going to be doing some toning. Um, and so I am going to put a timer on. We're going to be back in seven minutes. You guys, we're going to give it seven minutes. Um, let our energy get started. Um, everybody go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. We shall return, you guys. Thanks for being here. We're going to the next phase. Seven minutes and we'll be back. I'm gonna roll on back into the room. 
back into the here and now. What we're going to be doing here today, with this very first meeting, is we're going to a very, very specific type of clearing. For some of you guys, you've done this before, you've been in our classes, you've been in some of the work that we're doing, or excuse me, that we've done. But today, in our first official group activation in energy clearing, we're going to be working specifically with the energy of the throat chakra, like I said, the solar plexus, and also the sacral chakra, in which, as you guys know, we will be reigniting that blue flame. And I say reigniting because it is my opinion, it is my belief, this is not the first time that we have done this. There have been many other lifetimes, many other stages in which we've gone through similar processes, similar awakening, similar activations. In my opinion, I believe that 2020 and the stage that we are in right now represents the culmination. For some of us, it is kind of the final showdown the actual great, and it's always a weighty term, forgive me. Sometimes it is. It's like a final battle, and I don't mean to, you know, turn it in or to manifest into that, but for some of us, it is perceived as a battle or, or an overcoming of darkness, whether it be within ourself, externally, externally, whatever it is, we are entering that stage, and so we're going to be opening up some of those energy centers in the body. And I just want to give you guys a little bit of an outline. I like to do this with these energy clearings. We like to let you know where we're going, how we're getting there, what we're doing there, what the direction is. I feel like it's very, very helpful for those of us that are beginning to understand and unpack energy and kind of figure out how stuff works. In my opinion, it's very helpful to understand, you know, just the route that which we are taking. And so to give you guys an idea of what we're doing here today, and this is, in most of the group work that we do in the School of Multidimensional Intuition, we find that there are standard entrance points, passageways, places on the human body in which we can very reliably move energy, create openings. In some cases, we create drainage. In some cases, we it's like we're venting, letting old energy out of the body. And so, one of the things we do in our group energy clearings is we start with a very gentle yet deliberate opening of the crown chakra. And so what we're going to be doing as we start out this meditation in this group clearing here today, some of you guys are going to be familiar with it because you've seen me do this before, but we start out in a moment in which I use a mantra. Some of you guys have heard of it. Um, it's very common. It's called the Mula mantra. Um, and, what, and what I do is I use that as a tool to create a collective gateway opening in the energy body and allow for a depressurization of the stagnated energy that gathers around the crown. Um, and so what we're going to be doing here today is going through a very deliberate deepening and opening process in the body in which I will be using this mantra in the beginning. And then right after that, for those of you guys that want to join me, I like to mention this. Right after that, we're going to be using a very special root phrase for the crown chakra. It's very, very helpful in actually creating almost what's like a diameter, you know, like a, the crown chakra actually begins to open and accept new energy on a little bit of a different level. So for those of you guys that feel guided, please choose to join me in Ogam Satyam Om. And I'm going to give you an example of how this goes. For those of you guys that want to follow me, you don't have to. The reality is your only real assignment here today is to allow yourself to receive. Especially if it's the first time you've ever done an energy clearing. Especially if you're just starting this process. Maybe this is your first experience with our group, with the work that I do. If it is, Feel free to just allow yourself to receive new energy. In fact, I'm going to say that again, and I'd like every person here to just internalize this, this, this phrase, and that is that we are here to receive new energy. We are here to receive new healing. We are here to receive new activation in the human body. And so one of the tools we'll be using in the beginning of our meditation here today goes like this. Ogam Satyam Om. It's a very simple phrase. Ogam Satyam Om. So for those of you guys that choose, please do join us in the beginning when we get to that point. From there, 
we're going to begin moving downward through the body. And I want to let you guys know the actual path in which we are going to be moving downward upon. Because for some of us, we find it's very helpful to be very specific with the energies that are moving through the body. It helps us understand and create just, you know, an internal map of where this energy is going. So upon opening the crown chakra, we begin to move that energy downward along the front of the body, down a pathway known as the conception vessel meridian. For some of us, it's also the Hara line. For some of us, it's the Shishumna. In this case, we're moving downward, the front of the body toward the throat. When we reach the throat, for those of you guys that choose to join me, we will be using the root word hum. And notice the NG at the end. What we find is uh, upon actually sending and receiving multidimensional energy transmitted by the human body is that the actual consonants or the phrasing or the mouth feel, we could even say of certain words or phrases upon toning, will create a different level of absorption in the body, or rather it will allow the energy to be received differently. And so um, what we find is upon using the NG at the end of some of these root words is it actually creates more of an opening. It's like this kind of like a concave type of an opening that will appear with an energy center, very much like a dish or an item with which you can place a frequency or, you know, liquid, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we're going to be using hung. And so we're going to be moving downward from there. Um, and when we get to the solar plexus, for those of you guys that are joining us, we're going to be using rung. Once again, notice the NG at the end. And what we're going to be doing is using that tone to begin swirling, to begin rotating the solar plexus. What happens when we begin moving this energy? Some of us begin to experience emotions. Some of us begin to experience old memories. Some of us begin to experience shadows or shades or elements of just energy that passes by very much like just things going down the drain. And so we just allow or we create an environment of radical allowance in terms of our emotions, in terms of our internal state. We are in a safe place here today. And so I want to just really internalize that you guys are going to allow yourself to really live in a world of true imagination, true connection. And so as we move downward, we move to the sacral chakra, in which we use the root word Vang. Vang. So we'll be opening up the sacral chakra and then we use Ya Vu Ra. Once again, very particular. That's the capsule phrase that allows us to ignite and open up that blue flame frequency within the sacral chakra. Once again, Ya Vu Ra. So those are our tools. That is our pathway. For each and every one of you, it may be a little bit of a different experience. Some of you here today, if it's your first time, you may find yourself in an internal space of wondering, am I even doing this right? What am I doing? What are we supposed to feel? What's meant to happen here? Well, the reality is for each of us here today, it is entirely individual, but you can see it down there on the bottom of the screen. In my opinion, it's one of the most important phrases to receive here today, and that is the level to which we experience this energy is directly proportionate to the level at which we allow ourselves to truly and fully participate in this unique process. So what it means is we get exactly what we put into this today. And so our mission is for those of you guys that are here, once again, you know it is to receive new energy. But wherever you are in this journey, just allow yourself to go through your internal process. Please consciously welcome that childhood imagination and join us in that internal realm of just pure creation. And so we're going to go ahead and begin. I know we've been going on and on here, guys. So <clears throat> allow yourself to settle in. There are no mudras. There are no mantras. You don't have to keep your back straight. 
Some of you will get itchy. You'll want to move. You might want to move yourself during this. That is perfectly okay. Some of you guys are going to have an experience where as soon as we get started, you're going to get interruptions and noises and cars going by and people and all kinds of things. And that is absolutely perfect. One of the most amazing things about this modality is that we create radical allowance. And so we just allow for each and everything. There are no mistakes in this world, but let's go ahead and get started, everybody. Close your eyes. Bring your energy inward. Bring your energy to those multidimensional beings gathered together with you in this moment. All those other people all over the world, in their own homes, in their own rooms, wherever they are, whatever they are. Tune into that energy around us. Tune into your expectations, into your desires, especially those things that you desire so deeply that you dare not speak them aloud to another living being. As you begin to breathe and center your energy, allow those desires to come into your body, into your internal realm. This is a safe place we're creating here today. And you are free to be your most beautiful, amazing, weird, bizarre, multi-dimensional self. And so as we start out here today, we're going to take a big, deep, synchronized breath. I'll count from three to one, and we just begin to synchronize our energy, locking into the blue flame, the soul group, we are creating an impenetrable fourth density sphere of healing energy around us. Take a deep breath in as a group with me. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hold that breath. And release. Understand you are now joining in together with your primary soul group, with the multidimensional versions of yourself, with your guides, guardians, and ancestors, and the timelessness of this now moment. Let's take a deep breath in as a group once again in three, two, one. Hold that breath and release it. Notice your thighs. Notice your waist. Notice your hips. Let's take a deep breath in as a group releasing that area of the body. Three, two, one, deep breath in. Hold it. And release. Bring your awareness to your shoulders and your chest and even your armpits. Let's release those areas together. Take a deep breath in, one unit, one group, three, two, one. Hold it. And release. Allow that breath to completely drain out of your body. It's like you're beginning to prime a pump inside you. You're creating a deep and slow, gentle, yet exaggeratedly rhythmic breathing. 
You're acknowledging that you're amongst a unit, one organism, one tribe, one family, rejoining together again, a reunion of frequencies. Let's take one more deep breath in as a group. Some of you guys will feel energy in the heart. Some of you will feel it in the head. Some of you will feel it elsewhere. This is your cord. This is your multi-dimensional grid connection point. For some of us, it is the center of being. We bring awareness to that energy in the body with this next breath in three, two, one. Hold it and release. Feel your breath, feel your energy, feel your internal environment. Acknowledge that whatever state you are in here today, whatever condition you are in here today, whatever version of yourself that is present here today, you are accepted. You are seen. You are a part of something. When you're ready, take a deep breath in and bring your awareness to the very top of your head. Welcome that childhood imagination. It's like a cartoon movie that still exists inside each of us, a realm of pure creation and magic. Find that version of yourself and simply begin pretending that you're breathing out of the top of your head. Sometimes you're like a chimney or a dolphin or a volcano or a fountain or a whale. Acknowledge those members of this multidimensional soul group breathing through the tops of their heads. Notice them within that energetic bubble and notice how how you bring your awareness to others, you begin to feel that energy within yourself. It's like a heartbeat or a pulsation or a swirl at the top of your head. And so we'll begin with the depressurization process. Allow your emotions to flow. Allow your energy to open. Here we go. Shreem Savishwaraya Namaha Om Shreem Baram Jyotishe Namaha Om Shreem Baram Brahmaya Namaha Om Shreem Baram Garunyaya Namaha Om Shreem Baram Bhavitraya Namaha Please follow me if you choose. Ogam Satyam Om Ogam Satyam Satyam Take a 
slow, gentle breath. Allow that energy, allow the emotion. Simply notice what you notice inside your body. Some of you will already begin feeling the throat, that energy. For some of us, it'll feel hoarse like a cough. For others, it'll feel smooth. For others, it will turn out like a fire or a coolness or a wind. As we bring our energy and focus downward to the throat, right at the top of your collarbone, right at the base, at that little notch, right at the base of your throat, we begin to bring our energy and our awareness downward. And on that next breath, we honor the presence of our guides, guardians, ancestors, family members, galactic family, all those guiding and assisting the members of this multidimensional soul group. We honor you and thank you for gathering together here today on behalf of these travelers and these beings and these multidimensional warriors. We ask that you place your energy, your focus, your intention at the throat chakra for collective activation of their true strength. Let's take a deep breath into that throat chakra in three, two, one. Hold that breath. And release. On this next breath, bring your awareness to the back of your throat. It's like a tube. You're pulling your energy from the back to the front. You don't have to think about it. Just try. Use that imagination, that childhood imagination. Take one more deep breath in and pull that energy from the back to the front. Three, two, one. Hold it. Exhale. Very good. Feel your energy. Notice the emotion. On this next breath, as I count from three to one, as we release, follow me in opening the throat. Take that deep breath in, three, two, one. Uh, settle. Notice your emotions. Notice your mental environment. Bring your awareness to the base of your throat. We're going to remove a plug, a blockage, a dead frequency, an old emotion, a previous state of being, a piece of trauma, an element of blocked energy from the body. It's like a cork about to leave your throat in three, two, one. Deep breaths, gentle, slow. Allow your emotions, allow your internal environment. Notice what you notice about your energy, about your internal realm, about your breathing. Notice what you feel in your environment. The energy of those fellow multidimensional travelers surrounding you 
in this fourth density sphere of energy. Upon that next breath, bring your awareness inward as we once again rejoin with that childhood imagination and we allow the formation in our internal space of a simple staircase leading down directly in front of us. Ten simple stairs or steps. This is the passageway to the deeper elements of your consciousness and your energy body. The passageway to the solar plexus and the deep recesses of your internal energy. On that next breath, simply notice in your internal realm those 10 steps in front of you leading down. Notice what they're made out of. Notice the color. Notice the materials. For some of us here, simply notice how that image may change in form in your internal realm, we simply acknowledge the existence of those stairs in front of us. Upon reaching out your hand in that internal realm, you might even find a handrail going down one side. On that next breath in your internal realm, simply look down at your feet in your mind's eye and notice what you're wearing. Notice where you are. Notice what age you are. This is a very important point in time in your experience here in this earth body. As we descend these steps we choose to descend deeper into our mission, into our self, into our consciousness, into our ability to truly activate your energy. Take a slow breath in. As I count from 10 to one, let's walk down those steps together. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gentle breath in nice and slow and release. As we descend slowly into the solar plexus, you may begin noticing a swirling or a rotation within your body. This is your energetic momentum, your spiritual momentum, your energy activating once again. Simply acknowledge and allow whatever state it's in at this point. Acknowledge the emotions the experience that you've built up at this stage of your life. And once again, acknowledge your desires, especially those desires so dear and sacred that you dare not speak them aloud to another living person. Bring that energy into your body. I'll count from three to one. And please join me in awakening the solar plexus. Take a deep breath in and three, two, one.
gentle, slow breaths. Bring your awareness to your belly, to the gut, to the solar plexus. For those of you that choose, you can place your hands there. For all those multidimensional visitors with us, we ask that you place your energy, your focus, your intention at the solar plexus. We allow for the creation and the ignition for the development of the next stage of what we chose to create. We will now remove a key blockage, a key emotion, a key stopping point in your life. It's like a little cork. It comes right out of the belly button. Gentle little pop in three, two, one. Very good. Gentle breaths. Allow any emotions, allow any memories, allow any relationships, allow any internal thought forms that arise in that moment. Just watch it go right down the drain. It's the energy that you're releasing. We honor them, we thank them, and we allow it to pass. As we bring our energy downward toward the sacral chakra in the pelvic region of the body, and I'll gently guide it down there for you. Three, two, one. As we allow ourselves to enter once again that internal space of pure imagination, descending deeper into our consciousness than we've been in a very long time. We find ourselves in that internal realm as one group, all those multidimensional travelers gathering together in the base of the pyramid. Look to your right and to your left and see the faces of those who are with you here today in that internal realm. Your brothers, your sisters, your comrades. We've done this before. And as we look upward in that internal realm, in the center of us, at the base of the pyramid, we notice that altar, that cylinder and on top of that cylinder, we notice in our own world, in our own realm, that dish, that receptacle, and the blue flame within it once again. As we prepare to awaken the sacral chakra and ignite the blue flame, please join me in infusing that energy. Take a deep breath in, in three, two, one. One more time. Very good. Allow those emotions. Beautiful. Reach forward into that dish in your internal realm. Take that blue flame into your hands. Drink it into the body. Allow it to enter your system. Congratulate yourselves. We are here once again. This is our brotherhood. This is our frequency. 
This is our remembering. This is our activation. Bring that energy downward into the sacral chakra. Downward, very good. Place your hands at the sacral region of the body. Downward, very good. Connect with that energy. Connect with the blue flame. <clears throat> Take a deep breath in. Good job, everyone. Lots of energy here today. Awaken your desires. Awaken your mission. Awaken your abilities. Awaken your next assignment. Take a deep breath in with me and awaken the new flame, the blue flame. Three, two, one. Yeah. and every one of you gathered here today. Allow that energy to reach you. Allow that blue flame to find that next version of yourself once again. Return to that pyramid. Return to that dimension. Return to yourselves. This realm needs you. This world needs you. And it is time to remember. Take a gentle, slow breath in. Acknowledge your emotions. Acknowledge your energy. Acknowledge those multidimensional travelers amongst you. And as we prepare to return to the earth plane, we simply look over our left shoulder in our mind's eye, a very familiar place over that left shoulder, stand our guides, guardians, ancestors, family members, galactic family, all those guiding and assisting the members of this soul group, of this brotherhood, of this blue flame collective. We honor you once again. We thank you for your assistance. And we say to you now, let us continue. In the name of the one infinite creator. So it is, so it is, so it is. Good job, everybody. As we allow those bodies and those physical shells to once again gently glide back here into 2020, back here on the earth plane, back here in that strange physical world, that physical realm in which we begin to take new steps, new movements. <clears throat> Excuse me, lots of energy here today. Good job, everybody. I know some of you guys are feeling that. Good job. Thank you, thank you. 
And so here we are, as we allow ourselves to just gently roll back here into the here and now. I want to say it. Congratulations. Wherever you are, whatever stage you are at in this journey here today, even if you're one of the people in this group that's like, I don't know, that was okay. Felt some energy. And you're still questioning why you're here or what you're doing. Congratulations. No matter where you are at in this journey, thank you for joining us and for being part of this key stage, this key stop in your journey here on earth. And so the reality is, congratulations, you guys really have, you've completed your first training mission in the Blue Flame Collective. And so what are we doing? For the next three months, we do have a full schedule laid out designed to enhance and continue the development of the most prevalent intuitive frequencies in the body. What I'd like each and every one of you to begin looking out for in the coming days and weeks following this meeting is a gut instinct, an activation of your gut instinct, that feeling, that still small voice in your body. It tells you, it gives you a feeling. You get this feeling in your body when you recognize truth. And so your mission is at this stage to begin projecting that outward using the throat chakra. And some of you guys, if you're like me, even though you haven't been speaking here today, you're going to feel a little bit sore there. You might feel some emotion. Some of you guys are going to feel a little bit of <coughs> a little bit of hoarseness. The reality is when we begin to truly move energy in the human body, we experience a thing called emotional burnoff. It does not happen to everyone, but it needs to be mentioned. Because when we truly begin to open up the multidimensional non-physical layers of the body, we go through healing processes. We feel old emotions, elements of our old selves and things begin to shift internally. And some of you in the coming days after this operation here today are going to feel some emotions. Be very gentle with yourself. Acknowledge that you are clearing. These are elements of yourself that are coming into balance once again. So be very gentle with yourselves. For those of you guys that are willing here today after this session at some point, summon a good deep cry. As crazy as it sounds, it's going to help you clear years worth of energy from the body. Especially upon opening up the solar plexus, we find that we have this ability. If you're able and willing to truly open up and it doesn't matter what you cry about. I say this in each and every session, you guys, it doesn't matter what it's about. The idea is, is that you can create this, that deep guttural cry. Everybody knows what it is where you're like, oh, 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 that deep guttural cry. And so for some of you guys, you're gonna find it very easy to allow that state, uh, get in the shower, get in the bath, stay there as long as you can and allow your emotional energy to flow. And for those of you guys that are real lucky here today, you're gonna to have a really good, deep, deep outpouring of emotion. It's a beautiful thing, honor yourself. And so that's gonna help you continue to integrate this work in the weeks to come. And then, so what's gonna happen, probably within a week uh, of today, we're gonna to release uh, a, a session from the chakra class that we did a few months, or yeah, I think it was like two months ago now. Um, in which we are working specifically once again with the blue flame frequency in the body. Um, also with the sacral chakra, very, very important session. And so um, please do, if you choose to follow along, please go through that session if, if it works for you. Um, and that's gonna help you integrate this blue flame energy in the body and especially begin to take back and make use of your own co-creative energy, the energy of passion. And I'm going to say it, you guys, some of you guys here today, as a result of this energy work, you are going to feel more passion in your body. Some of you guys are going to feel a return of some passionate sexual energy. And the reality is it's nothing to be ashamed of. It doesn't happen for everyone, but it bears mentioning because when we open these energy centers of the body, we will experience sometimes a return of our energy, sometimes a new stage of that. And so be very gentle with yourselves and just acknowledge that you are opening and that you are healing. Um, and you know, you are amongst a group of travelers that are also going through this process. So um, take what you can, file the rest for future reference. Anything that you heard here today and you're like, yeah, I don't know, I really like this part, but this guy, Matthew, I don't know, they said this other thing and you know, I don't know, throw that part out. Throw the parts out that don't work. And I know for some of you, that's a haphazard thing to do, but the reality is, the truth and the frequency of truth, it's a little bit different for each of us and it's gonna be perceived differently. 
So take what you can from the information that you've received here today and leave the rest. New things will show up at a later date and you may find yourself coming to use of some of this information later in new ways. And so uh, please note, you guys, our next official meeting, everyone, it is October 17th. And I want to please make note of the time. It is two hours later than when we met today. And I, I'm trying to do that for people on the other side of the world. Uh, I know there's a lot of people in Australia. I'm just going to say it. Thank you to the Australians that are here. There's, a tr there's actually, I think there's over 20 people from Australia that registered for this. And I know some of you guys are gonna be watching the replay. Uh, no worries, we're gonna do it a little bit later and we might do it later after that as well. And so we're, maybe we'll, we will do a poll in the future because I know it's like really early in the morning for some of you guys also in Europe. Um, and so for those of you guys catching us on the replay, we're gonna do a little bit later next month. We're gonna do a little bit later, so don't worry. Um, and I also mentioned this in each and every one of these classes, you guys, for those of you guys that really want to begin opening up the physical layers of the body, you want to begin using your intuitive abilities, you want to begin using your full mental faculties, excuse me, faculties, you want to be uninfluenced by the frequency interference and the noise. And yeah, I'll say it, the residue from vaccinations and westernized or mainstream medicine, we want to begin removing the toxicity and the energetic residue from the layers of the body. And one of the most effective things that you can do in the coming months, even if this is the only time you ever come to this gathering, and I'm gonna say it again, I promise, the only time, please do join us on Patreon. I'm gonna open up a $10 option for you guys. I know not everyone has 20 bucks that you wanna spend every month, but I wanna make it accessible to you guys. And so um, you can also join at the $10 level as well. It almost sounds like a telephone, I'll stop there. But um, in the meantime, please begin a heavy metal detox protocol. Um, it doesn't matter which one of these you take. Everyone's an expert on this stuff now, you guys, and some of you guys are gonna go, oh, that's, that thing's not on the list. That's not there. I take this, I take that. Perfect, whatever it is. The idea is, is that at this stage, we're creating a health regimen around the idea of purifying the physical body. One of the things that I began to experience when I started having what I believe to be true extra extra dimensional or we could say extraterrestrial experiences um for me it was a group of mantis beings that we can talk about and you know later later gatherings i'm not the only one that's encountered them but one of the first things they told me over and over again almost like a record they were like purify your body purify your body purify your body it was like this thing that just kept slammed into me um and you know fast forward three years later and i understand that to be at least in my case purification of the energy centers, the physical and non-physical layers of the human body, primarily heavy metal particulate matter. For those of you guys that are familiar with the concept of artificial intelligence or AI sentience or, you know, uh, wherever you want to go down that road, one of the ways in which we can mitigate or lessen the impact of inorganic consciousness influence on the body is directly through heavy metal detox. So, um, look at that stuff on the list there, you guys. Please take what you can, um, whatever it is that um, will work for you. And, you know, once again, you can use your own. The idea is that we begin and we continue. Sonia has a good question there. She says, what, which ones are for the parasite flush? Thank you. That's really good. Wormwood, black walnuts, any other form of physical parasite flush. There's a mainstream brand, you guys. For those of you guys in the U.S., it's called Scram, S-C-R-A-M. Um, it's, 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 it's mild, but it totally works. And it will begin the process of flushing out energetic and also physical uh, parasites from the body. And so I guess the reason why that's being brought up is because it's very important on the collective plane right now. For those of us that have not done a physical parasite flush, my Lord, if you begin this process here today, you are going to experience probably in about two months from now, because it's a cumulative process an entirely different level of energetic sensitivity in your body um and so for the, if you guys have questions about that you can post that in the patreon group uh, especially for this session here today um and for those of you guys that are members of our facebook groups we have one called remember your mission you can look that up on facebook please do join it if you would like to continue the discussion of what we're doing here today um, I think I'm going to change the name to Blue Flame Collective. It's possible, but for those of you guys that have other questions, please throw them into the Remember Your Mission group or add them on Patreon, um, and we'll be getting into them. Z says, Diatomaceous Earth. Thank you. That is, you're right. That should have been on the list. Thanks, Z. 
I knew, I knew there's, see, there's always, there's like a million things. Zeolite's another one. Um, I added things on this list, you guys, that I personally have taken. And so what you're seeing here is the personal list of uh, just the regimen that I uh, take on almost a daily basis. We'll go through certain ones of these. We take them at certain times. It's not all these things all the time, but um, very, very helpful for awakening energy and purifying, especially the upper chakras. For those of you guys that are getting influenced by ascension symptoms right now, by really intense emotions, um, fulvic acid especially. Um, and also all the way down there at the bottom of the list, ant essence. It's a little bit unrelated, you guys, a little bit unrelated to detox medications or supplements, but it is something that has been used by the Chinese for thousands of years. Um, and if you're vegan, you know, then, you know, don't take ant essence unless you don't care, but um, ant essence and specifically uh, just any of the products made by a company called Dragon Herbs. No, I'm not affiliated with them on any level, so don't worry. I'm not selling their products, but they do have a product known as Adaptogen Energizer. Um, and for those of you guys that are interested in learning how to open up the kidney meridian and awaken primordial chi in the body that gives you energy and fire in your system, um, it's just one of the supplements that I've taken over the past, I think, five years now. Um, it's one of the only ones that I ever mentioned the actual brand because it's one of those things that you can buy and it's very reliable. It will start to create a little bit of a fire in your body. And for some of us, if, you know, we will feel a little bit more aggressive. That's a thing that can happen. It'll, it'll, it'll show you if it's appropriate for you. But for those of you guys that are beginning in what I believe to be the path of developing those tools, developing your energy. For those of you guys that are beginning Qigong or Tai Chi, Kundalini Yoga, or any forms of thoughtful body movement, it is my belief and one of the tools that I've used to really begin to allow our body to tangibly use and feel some of that Qi energy. And for some of us, it can, you know, it can have other, you know, feelings and some of us will get a little emotional and tense. So, it's something that I like to mention, especially for those of us that have had a lot of stagnancy in the body. Um, we've been dormant for most of this year. We've been in you know, quarantine and we've just been sitting. And so one of the things that I've noticed when I've started taking, especially the things on this list, is the energy starts to flow in the body. And one of the things we notice is if you don't put it to use, sometimes we can get a little bit intense. And so just be made aware of that. And so. For those of you guys that are here, please, if you have any other questions, throw them in the chat. I see your questions and comments there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are essentially done. So I know we've been here for a long time today. For those of you guys, if you have stuff to do, feel free. You guys can roll out. For those of you guys that are still here, if you have any questions, throw them in there. We're going to hang out for a couple more minutes to see if anyone has any more questions. Um, Miriam says, bentonite is diatomaceous earth. I think it is. I know that there's many brands, um, kind of different grades. Uh, one of the brands of bentonite clay that I've been taking, I believe it is called Yerba Prima. I think it's the brand name is Yerba Prima. Um, but there are many, many different forms, many different forms. I actually know the brand is Great Plains. Thank you for that. Whoever just reminded me in my head. But in my opinion, that's also one of the most helpful things you can take to begin to clear the gut. It really begins to open up the intestine, specifically that large intestine, um, which helps us let go of dead emotion in the body, also dead physical matter. And when we're able to do that, it tends to move into that small intestine and allows the pH balance to begin to shift. And one of the things about diatomaceous earth and bentonite clay that's really helpful is that it creates a natural flushing of that. And that's what will really help for a lot of us. I guarantee you, some of you guys are gonna feel that or you're going to begin taking those things and you're going to notice that the inflammation around your gut and your midsection is going to begin to shrink. Um, and you might even feel some emotions in the process because for those of us that have a lot of trauma in the body, um, sometimes during the detox process, we'll, we'll, we will just kind of begin to feel it. It'll start to leak back in. So be very gentle with yourself during the detox. Drink a lot of water and go very, very slow. Thank you, thank you. Z's got some good in, in, input there about diatomaceous earth. You are absolutely correct. There's, there's many different forms of it. Uh, that's actually really, really good information. For some of us, um, that's why we will really, really need to, to ultra hydrate. Um, one of the things that I liked about the bentonite clay, the liquefied form of that, um, and I guess we're meant to talk about that here. Thanks, you guys. Um, is that it, it created a much more smooth movement in the body. 
Um, and Dana, thank you. I see you raising your hand there. Feel free to put your uh, question in the chat um, if you can. Thank you for that. Um, and I will definitely get to you. Um, in the future, we are going to just let people kind of come on and like speak their questions out. Um, we are going to do that in the future. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cillium Husk. Very, very good. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Let us know if you have any other questions. Let us know how you're doing after that clearing, too. I noticed I didn't even ask. Let us know how you're feeling, how you're doing. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes. And once again, please join us October 17th. I also do want to let you know, I will say it, um, we're not going to do an event link on the website for October 17th. Going forward, this is going to be primarily the Patreon group. And so just want to let you guys know that is the group container for the Blue Flame uh, Collective and the work we're gonna be doing going forward. So um, yeah, thanks you guys, super calm. Very good, That that right, on a lot of levels, that's the idea. Notice your dreams, you guys. Um, notice how you wake up in the coming days, especially tomorrow morning. One of the things that we experience upon opening the crown chakra, especially in these big group openings. And I know a lot of you guys, some of you guys are even still feeling that sort of ring around your head or it feels a little bit like a cap sometimes. It'll be like this little ring that we have there. Um, what tends to happen for many of us, not everyone, but we will experience kind of like a download or it's sort of like a dream moment or it'll be a phrase or it'll be just this, this like moment of activation that occurs and I can tell you almost exactly where to look for it. It's immediately upon waking. As soon as you can bring your conscious mind into your body in the morning, do not analyze, don't choose, don't feel into it, just notice, just simply allow. Some of you guys are gonna get an image, you're gonna get a phrase, you're gonna get a situation. You'll, some of you guys will get a weird thing and you'll be like, I don't know, what does that mean? I don't know, Matthew. Whatever it is, it's going to be specific to you. And through my experience, it's very reliable at this point, you guys. Even if it feels like something that you will have no idea how to interpret, what happens is upon opening that crown chakra, and especially the depressurization process in the body, it's like all of that old junk that we were holding in the closet, you know, that metaphorical closet within us, for some of us, the auric field, all of that dead air kind of leaves and things begin to open up and move in. And one of the most potent openings we have in the body is right upon wakening. Many of the energy centers, and especially this place in the back of the head, known as the Bindu chakra or the moon portal on the body, those places are very, very open. So especially after we do these big clearings, we tend to notice or feel energy coming in. And so, um, yeah, notice what you notice. Thank you. 1175 Lion Eagle, thank you. Yeah, weird, strange feelings, good job. For some of us, that's gonna be an unfamiliar feeling and you're like, whoa, what's going on? And you guys are gonna know from this point forward, whatever, wherever you are at in that sensory experience after this clearing, you are feeling in the moment, even if it is intense, it is the shifting of your energy. And so some of you guys during this, you have burps, Charlene has sneezing, some of us have yawns, some of us have tears, some of us will have shivers in the body, some of us will sort of feel this like pulsation and this throbbing, some of us it's down at the bottoms of the feet, but for each and every one of us it is different and so honor that state that you're in, allow that energy to integrate and I want to thank you guys once again for being here, we're not going to keep you too much longer, I'm just waiting to see if we have any more questions coming in, I want to make sure everybody gets heard. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Charlene. For those of you guys that are catching the replay, thank you as well. And so, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up in a moment here, but I want to bring your attention to the text at the bottom of the screen. Those of you guys that are still here, you are now in training to become, yes, a hidden operative of truth and planetary liberation. This is the humble beginning and the activation of that stage in your life in which we are beginning to work on behalf of that resistance, that liberation, and that group that came here to free this realm. Guard this purpose. Treat it with reverence. You are amongst a select group of beings on the earth plane who have chosen to make this change, to step into this role. And your assignment, yes, your assignment 
is to now begin seeking the others. There are many, many more of us out there. They need to be heard. They need to be found. They need to be acknowledged. And it doesn't matter if it's through this group. You don't have to come in here and join this group and pay me money to do this every month. That's not what it's about. It's about acknowledging ourselves, acknowledging our return, acknowledging our activation, and acknowledging that we signed up for this stage here on earth. We've waited lifetimes for this opportunity. And we're back. Our time is now. And I truly, truly hope, my prayer is we're going to continue this process with each and every one of you, wherever you are in this world. Thank you for joining us. You're going to receive an email for those of you guys that signed up on the website in the coming hours. For those of you guys that joined on Patreon, I'm going to just launch the link um, as soon as it's done. It takes about an hour usually after we close this for everything to process, sometimes longer. I'm going to post the share link for this video on Patreon. Please do download it. And I'm also going to be 100% straight up. Feel free to share it. Share it with others. Send it to other people. If there's another person in your world who you think would benefit from this, if you can find the others, send them this recording. Get them involved. We're going to release part of this on YouTube, the energy claim portion, in the coming weeks. Um, and you guys are going to uh, get the sacral chakra uh, session in the coming days. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and bounce. I love you guys. Thank you for being here, for spending all day with me. Congratulations, we are now the Blue Flame Collective. Let's find the others. Let's keep this energy going. We have a lot of work to do, and I'm excited to be with you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Allow this energy to reach you well. And I believe, you guys, we are going to get out of here. So thank you for being here. You, can, you always know, for those of you guys that are with me, it takes a moment for my little toolbar to open up. But I love you guys. We are going to see you October 17th. Reach out with any questions via email on Patreon or at the Remember Your Mission group on Facebook. I love you guys, and we will see you in the future. Take care.